Good morning and welcome to Sewing Street. I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm so happy to have you here on this lovely Friday morning. Isn't the weather fantastic? It's just such a great day. Wonderful to have you. If you haven't shopped with us before, the best way of doing so is on our website, www.sewingstreet.com. And on there, you'll be able to see a little YouTube page with, um, if you're live, you'll be watching me live on there now. And just below that, you'll see a little bar that says shop by category. Our website team's been working very hard to be able to split our different products over the various categories that you'll see in there and then beneath that all the products we've had on today's show and all other shows are available so that's a really great way to do it otherwise if you'd like to call our UK based call center 0800 001 4433 that's a nice way of doing it as well and you're here as our early birds so you're one of the lucky people to be able to see and be able to enjoy our fabulous early bird special We've got the fabulous, uh, I always get it wrong, I want to call it June Taylor, but it's not, Taylor Savile Magic Quilting Pins. These are really fantastic. We've used these a few times on the show, and what's so great about them is that you can iron over them. They've got a really nice thin uh, pin on that, so that is, I think it's point six millimeters that's tiny so you can easily attach that onto any project that you're doing and iron over them and these lovely little plastic ends on them make it really really easy to use and to iron over very very comfortably you can see how really nice and thin they are and they're just really really robust on these um a pin ends. You know a lot of the times you get those plastic ones when you iron over them it leaves a little mark on your fabric. These are tried and tested and absolutely brilliant and they won't mark your fabric, they won't distort and they'll last you for years and years and years. And today only we're going to be able to oh, Oh, pardon me. Able to offer those at £7.99. That's saving £2 on our usual price. And don't forget, you've got our one-day PNP. So if you get our early book, you've paid our PNP all through the day. So you can buy anything else you like for the rest of the day without paying further postage and packaging. So that is a really great deal that we're able to bring with you today. And remember, that's available until stocks last or for 24 hours, whichever comes first. So make sure you check those out. It's a really, really fabulous product, that. Really great, that. Um, if you'd like to stay in touch with us on our social media platforms, we've got several ways you can do that. First one being our channel run page on Facebook, which is... Um, Sewing Street TV, so you type into your search bar www.facebook.com forward slash Sewing Street TV, and that's a really great way if you want to message us during this, the shows. You can message us on the message button on the Sewing Street TV. And then if you've got a question about a product that we're doing, you can easily get that answered whilst we're on air. Or if you just want to say hello or show us what you're doing, we'd love to hear from you. Um, over and above that, we've got our Facebook fans page as well, which is Sewing Street fans page. That's a really great resource as well. Great way to be able to engage with your fellow customers and be able to then share the projects that you're working on. Um, we've also got our Instagram page, which is Sewing Street, and our YouTube channel, which is Sewing Street as well. And the great thing about our YouTube channel is if you go onto the videos link at the top, you'll be able to get every single video that we've ever had, going right back to the first day where we broadcast, being Valentine's Day. So any demonstration for the fabulous block of the week that we've got coming up at nine o'clock, you'll be able to see that going back to week one. One, we've been able to pull those out as separate hours for you as well. So that may take a day or two after the uh, broadcast for that to come up, but you'll always be able to then have a separate video for you to be able to refer back to for our fabulous block of the month. So today we've also got some fabulous products as well. We've got the fabulous Victoria Carrington's um, Alison Glass panel quilt. This is the charcoal one. Now, I'm warning you, we've, we're not sure when we, if or when we'll be able to get these in again, but we have not got a lot left of the charcoal. This is, I want to say, beyond limited, because look how fantastic that is. Absolutely gorgeous. And I'm going to be able to show you exactly how you make this. And it is so simple. It's really, really great. So that's a nice way. On this one, you'll see that the border is going left to right, where the pattern we've got today is like the ivory that we've got here, which is actually going up and down. I don't, I think I prefer the up and down actually, but it's very versatile that you can do it. And then you've got the ivory colorway as well. We've got a few more of these, but just look how vibrant that is. And a really, really, really lovely, easy pattern on how to do this as well, which I'm going to show you now. Really, really great. 
I've just realised we haven't put my sewing machine up. <laughs> We're going to get Joe to get that for us now. So let's start out with our ivory bundle. I'll show you what we've got. So you're going to get this fantastic pattern from Victoria Carrington. Really, really fabulous pattern, this. Very, very, very instructive. It shows you exactly how to do a quarter-inch seam, do a scant quarter-inch seam. It's a really, really good pattern. And it's great because you can use this pretty much for any other panel project that you can find. It's a really great pattern. It's versatile to be able to then use for other products as well. So let me show you what you're getting. First of all, you're going to get this wonderful panel made by Alison Glass. Alison is one of the most incredible designers. I absolutely adore her use of colours. Just look how incredible this is. You're going to get two runs of four of these fabulous circles. So you'll have four different circles in the edge. That's our panel. And then you're getting um, a half metre of these four colourways here as well. Just really, really lovely colours. Now, I'm going to try and remember these. As far as I remember, that is peacock, fuchsia, pomegranate and orange. Forgive me if I got that wrong. That's off the top of my head. And there are so many beautiful colours in this range. As far as I know, I think that's the exact one that you're looking at. And then you're also getting, if I'm not mistaken, a metre or is it a metre and a half? It is a metre of the ivory which is just a beautiful colour in itself as well. Goes so versatile with absolutely everything and it works so well with these fantastic colours. Thank you, Joe. Oh, I've just heard now, I'm going to show you the charcoal, but we've only got one left of them. So if you want the charcoal, before I even show this to you, it may very well sell out. So just to let you know. So you can see there the four different colours on it. These four, you're getting a half metre of all of those. You're getting a metre of that gorgeous school grey at the bottom. And then we've also got the charcoal panel. And you can see just how beautiful that colourway is there. It just goes so well. And these colours that go with it... Oh, sorry, it's gone. Sorry, it's gone. I'm going to have to hide that away because... Congratulations, whoever got that. Such a great deal. So give me two seconds. I'm going to pop that up here. So we have this fabulous panel. So obviously I started my demo in the charcoal, but I didn't know it was going to be so popular. So forgive me using the charcoal. I know it's got sold out, but it's exactly the same in the ivory, just with slightly different colours. So the very first thing you're going to, to make in this pattern is this wonderful strip set. And then when you've done it, you're going to cut it in half, and that... Sorry, it'll take a bit of finagling. I'll get there. That sits beautifully on the top of your quilt over there. So that's how that's going to work on that. And I'll just show you how you create this because it's quite important that we make sure you're doing these correctly because if you don't, you're gonna get a little bow in your fabric. Now, let me get the color order right here. This is all in the pattern for you. So don't worry if you can't remember these all here, but if you then look at our YouTube video later on, once you've made this, uh, when you buy the pattern, uh, and the bundle, you'll be able to refer back to it and you'll see exactly how it is that we do it. So we're going to have a colourway like this. If I put this the right way around, you can see it goes green, pink, blue, yellow. Green, pink, blue, yellow. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these together in sets and I'm going to sew from here to here. But when I finish that, I'm going to sew these two together from there to there. The reason being is very, very simple. If you, show, if you, if you sew all of your fabric the, the same way, you're going to end up getting a, a bow in your fabric, which is never a good thing, because when you're working so hard to do these gorgeous straight lines, you want to make sure that it is going to be as effective as the designer wants it to be. And by not having that um, bow in it, by sewing it the right way, means you're just going to have that gorgeous effect of perfectly straight lines on it. Oh, we've had a message in from Sue. Thank you so much for messaging in, Sue, saying how lovely she thinks the set looks and how colourful it is. It does look quite good today, doesn't it? So now I'm on to my second uh, strip set here, the green and the pink. 
And again, I'm sewing these in the same direction as I'm doing the blue and the green. Now on here, a quarter inch seam is quite important. So you, oh gosh, I'm using this fabulous 560. I could have just pressed my thread and mark button to do that. So we've got our pink, green, yellow, blue. Right, so we've got those together. So I've sewn these from this end to that end. Now I'm gonna take this and sew from that end to this end. Nope, I've got these wrong. No, I haven't, I've got them the right way around. Just, yes, just always double check which direction you're going in. Exactly. Check twice, cut once, unpick once, and do it the right way the first time. Isn't that the way we always end up with it? Oh, I'm hearing we've got less than 20 of the ivory bundle left. So you're gonna create a whole strip set of these in the length that's required in the pattern. So you'll be able to do that. And with these, you can press it to either side, either the left or the right. I knew I had my ironing board here. Two seconds, I've not gone away. I've just lost the plug of the iron. Right. So this, you can either, you can do this either way. You can either press your seams all in one direction or you can press them open or you can press them to the dark side and alternate. It's entirely up to you. What I did in this is I actually then just went from right to left and just pressed it all the way along. And you can see I'm putting a tiny little bit of pressure on here, not a lot, I'm not distorting the fabric, because you've spent all that time making sure you've got nice straight seams. You don't want to end up with a further bow by pulling this really hard in the middle and getting it wrong. So once you press your seams open as well, or press your seams whichever way you choose, I just give it a nice little press from that end. And if you want to give it a blast of steam at this point, you're qu quite fine. And there you go. So you just repeat that for the full length of your fabric and that's you done. So that's the first bit of the pr of pattern that you need to do there. Sorry. And obviously then for each colorway, you're going to do exactly the same thing. You're just changing your colors as you go. So some of you have used this fantastic ruler before. Some of you haven't. So I'm going to give you a very quick demo on how you're doing this. So this is the fantastic Stropology Squared Ruler. Really, really fantastic ruler here. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to create yourself a, a straight edge over here at the very start, and then you're going to be cutting the widths across here. I'm just going to double check that it's the width that I think it is. And it is. So the great thing is you've always got this fabulous pattern right next to you to be able to do it. And you won't be doing it on live telly where things could possibly go wrong. And I've got my fabulous rotary cutter here and I've hidden it as I always do. There we go. So I've now lined my fabric up at the bottom here with my fold line. I've lined it up at the top there so I can make sure my fabric is as straight as it can be. I'm then going to take my rotary cutter and you've got this wonderful little teardrop down here. You're going to pop your blade into that teardrop area, press down all the way up and you've now created yourself a nice neat edge. Now you do not need to move anything at all. On the bottom of this ruler, I'll move this up ever so slightly, you will see at the bottom over here, if I put my head there, there you go, you can see that there are these wonderful markings here and it tells you that the squares are every two and a half inches. So I know I need two and a half inch strips for this, but like binding really. So on my two and a half inch mark, or my square mark, I put that that way, and I mark it across and I cut my two and a half. Then I go to my five inch, because I need two strips of this, and I do exactly the same thing down there. Then I lift my ruler up, get rid of the edge that I used to straighten up. That's just, that's all my waste on that. There we go, and there we go. It's such an easy ruler to use, and it really, really helps you making this quilt, because you do have quite a lot of things to cut out. And luckily, they're all in half inch increments, so this is a really fabulous ruler to make your life a bit easier whilst you're making this, this quilt.
So then what we're going to do is this incredibly ingenious, whoops, I'm dropping my border. Now remember, you're doing this in the ivory because unfortunately the charcoal is all sold out. So you'll be doing this in a different colorway and instead of having my dark gray, you will have ivory on the background. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut your colored fabric and your ivory fabric in exactly the same width. You're gonna sew them together. So effectively, you've got a little circle. So what's really great about that, and let me check I've got my color orders right, I do. I'm now going to take my pink and I turn these inside out so I know where my pink is and I've decided this is entirely your choice. You can do it how you want to do. So I'm allowing that little bit extra above the, gr the green and I want my pink to go there. And this is entirely up to you how you line this up. You can have it further up, further down, however you want to do it. And what I do is I move my grey and when you've got your ivory, and I'm just going to do a little finger press at that point. So I've still got a circle, still got my circle, still got that there, but I've got a little finger press mark there. Now, everybody hold your breath because this is not what you normally do in quilting. You take this with the scissors and that's it, you're done. And now you sew that onto the quilt. Is it just not the most genius, genius thing that she's thought up with? so so great and it's so organic as well because it means it doesn't matter if you make this quilt once or twice every single time you make it it will be entirely different now i remember which way i sewed this the thing now remember as well when i spoke to you before sewing from left to right one way right to left the other way i know i've got to sew this from this end to this end because i very cleverly put a pin in it as to where i last sewed it to so i think that's always important when you finished it because I last did this demonstration a couple, uh, was about a week ago? Um, and when I did it then, I was doing the demo there, but I always make sure I put a pin in, because like you, we're gonna start a project and you're not gonna have time to finish it at the time. As much as we think we'd like to, we've got the time to do it, none of us ever do. So when you come back to it two or three days later, you're racking your brains thinking, which way was I going? You're counting up which way. It's just so much easier putting a pin in the way that you ended the last time when you sewed. And of course, remember, we've got our fabulous early bird for those pins. If you're running, if you haven't got any good pins, that's a nice one to be able to use to remember that. And there we go. And of course, because I'm using the fabulous 560, I've just remembered this time, I can use my un my um, thread cutter there. So what I do with this one is each time I've sewn a block on, I'm going, uh, a strip on, I'm actually going to sew that, um, fold that back each time. And you'll see I'm folding, I'm sewing, pressing, not sewing, pressing all in the same direction. So it'll be exactly the same as this. I've got this nice and flat. First thing I do is I set my seams. And if you haven't used the, uh, heard of the term set your seams, what happens is, at the moment I'm using polyester as my thread. So when you apply a bit of heat to the polyester, it literally goes <coughs> like that and it sucks in on itself. Sorry for the noise, but it's the most descriptive of it. You won't forget it. And that way then it just holds your fabric that little bit tighter to be able to then get yourself a nice crisp flat edge there. And there we go. When you're working so hard on doing something so effective, you want to make sure that you're doing as much precision work on it as you can. And that's it. That's your first step on that. And you just keep going. And then you do another one. Follow the colorway that you're doing. So my next colorway is blue. So I'm going to hold my blue here, turn it the right way around. And I think we need to go a bit more down this way because I think this end is being a bit neglected. So the pattern recommends you don't go more than two and a half inches into this. And what's so fabulous about this little mat is you've got the measurements on here. So you can see that that's probably a bit low. So I'm gonna do it to there. So I've got my blue mark over there lining up to the eight and a half. So that's another really lovely feature about this June Taylor pressing mat. So I'm pressing that there, again, getting your finger marks on it. And then I'm using my wonderful Fisker scissors again, and there we go. 
Um, and now I didn't put my pin in. I can't remember which way I started. There we go. So I'm sewing from that end to that end. Oh, that's the wrong way round. So you do that, pin that down, and you get that to your sewing machine. And you do the next one along. I'm hearing that the ivory is selling really, really well. We're down to our teens in these kits. I'm not surprised, it's such a wonderful colorway. I think anything with Alison Glass has just got to be celebrated. She's so, so talented. And the colours that we've chosen are all in that fabulous design that she's made, which is really the star of this quilt. But at that price as well, look at that, £38.92 for this fabulous quilt. I can't remember the measurement. Oh, it's 44 by 60 centimetres, uh, 44 by 60 inches. So that's a really decent size lap quilt for your living room. It's a nice child size quilt as well. So there we go, we've now sewn our second bit on. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing again. Get it folded the right way. Exactly the same thing again. We're gonna set our seams. And you can even tell once I've done that, how the fabric actually lies flatter there and how the, the thread is actually, I want to say the word sucked in on itself, but that's totally not what it does. But it just, it contorts because you've got the, um, the polyester and the polyester reacts that way with heat. It works very well. And the good thing is you can keep that nice pressed seam going in the same direction by doing it that way. You can see all my seams are going in the same direction. So there we go. That's the way you do the middle section. And you'll see on this gorgeous ivory one how that is so organic and so different to what I've done because it's entirely up to you how you make that central section. And this is unfortunately the only colorway that we've got available, but I don't think it's unfortunate because it is so beautiful. Really, really great colorway there. So then the only other thing I do need to show you on this is when you cut your panels up. So as we all know, panels come and they all come at different widths and different ways that they arrive at you. And that's, that's not a problem because there's a very easy way around it. Let me show you what I mean. So over here, this is a panel that has been cut, but you'll always notice one side's got a little bit more than the other. Now that is actually really great because this is where you're able to change your quilt to make it different to what everybody else has got. So you can see over here, we've got about three eighths of an inch. Where's my ruler? So that is fantastic. You can see there, oh, it's more. Yeah, it's about three eighths of an inch over here on this edge. So when you're doing this, you line this up with three and eighths of an inch and you draw your little dotted line all the way along the quilt and you trim that down. And then what you do over here, what I would suggest you do over on this side, is go three eighths of an inch on this side as well. Because then when you sew these into your panels, you can put the three eighths of an inch on this side or on that side, whichever you prefer. And then you've got a little bit extra on the other side because if you look over here, the three eighths of an inch over there gives me a nice little wedge of fabric over here. And equally on this side of the panel, you've got a little bit extra over there. So you can decide if you want to put that little extra bit of fabric on this side, or you want to put it on that side, or you want to cut three eighths on either side and then have the same equal distance on either side of the quilt there. It's entirely up to you how you do that, but it's just a nice little addition on how you can actually adjust the quilt, the quilt that you're making, to your own specifications on how you want it to be. It's just a nice little addition to do it. It's just my, one of my little tips on how to I like changing every project to be unique to what it is that I'm doing. So that's a nice way of doing it. So let me recap what you're getting in our bundle. I'm gonna just move this charcoal one out of the way because that one's sold out. And because it's so lovely, I'm making sure that I fold it nicely and put it in the right place. So what we're getting today for our ivory bundle, you're getting our fabulous panel. And this panel truly is fabulous. Look at that. The detailing on it, the colour, everything is just so brilliant. And that's what makes Alison Glass such an incredible designer. Her use of colour is just exceptional in such a modern way. 
And to give you a little bit of history on it, this pattern was actually printed about five, six years ago, and it was so popular that they brought it back. When have you heard of such a fabulous pattern being brought back? And you can see on this piece over here, you've got that blue circle in the middle, but then underneath it, you've got the pink circle. So you can see there, that little circle there is in one colorway. And if I lower it down, it's in a different colorway. So the gray, and it then moves this way as well. So you've got the pink there, the pink at the bottom, and then the pink here. So it just goes in that sort of V shape all the way through, just such a fabulous design. So that's the panel you're going to get. And then once you've got your panel, folded a lot better than what I've just done. You're also going to get this wonderful pattern which gives you so much detailing on how you sew everything together. If you want a quarter inch explanation, a scant quarter inch explanation, all available for you in this wonderful panel as well. A pattern, not panel. Um, we've got that there. And it's called the coin stack quilt, which I love. And then you've also got these half meter sections here with these four gorgeous colorways. Um, I'm 90% sure that that's peacock, fuchsia, pomegranate and orange. Hopefully that's right. If not, forgive me. So you're getting a half a meter of those four and you're getting a meter of the ivory. So you're getting three meters of fabric, three meters of fabric, this gorgeous panel, but look at that and how well they go together as well. And the fabulous pattern for less than 40 pounds for such a great quilt coming in at 44 inches by 60 um, and it's just such a great size as well you can use it anywhere let me show you the finished quilt again it's just so lovely whoops and you can see it's a nice good size so on a sofa that would be perfect to cover yourself with and I'm quite round, so you can see that would cover me completely. And then again, it's 60 inches tall, and it's just such, a, and the detailing with the, bo the borders. So you'll see that that teal blue border you've got underneath the panel, you don't have to use the teal. You can use any color you like, because the pattern lets you choose whether you use that. So whether you want to do a nice orange or the pomegranate or the fuchsia, you can easily choose any choice that you like. I quite like the blue, because I love my blue. Um, but it's just a really lovely design and I do think that these vertical or vertical stripes that we've got on the border here really really just add that extra bit of depth to the quilt and you'll notice that that middle section is off centered to the top and the bottom as well so when you put that together you'll be able to see the middle bit here it's been off centered so you're not getting that straight line image through it but you could, if you want to make it that you've got that straight line through it, you can. It's entirely up to you how you make that go, which is such a great quilt because I love it when you've got that idea of interpretation and you can do whatever you like with it. Really, really fabulous quilt. It's selling really well at the moment and they're thinking we're going to be selling out of that before the end of the show. Really, really great product. So I'm sure you'll enjoy that. So we're going to recap our little early bird special that we've got here. These t uh, t Taylor Saville, sorry, I was going to say the wrong name again there. Taylor Saville pins here, these are heat resistant. Wow, there are only 20 of these remaining. So our early birds have definitely been out getting those bargains today. Well done. Um, so that's $7.99 for these 50 pins. They're one and three quarter inches long, which I think that reads as 48 millimeters. And it's 0.6 millimeters wide. So a really good size pin, really, really great. And also then when you're wanting to, they're completely heat resistant so you can um, happily and safely iron over these wonderful edges and you won't ever have to worry about it being a problem. And the great thing is if you just want to put a good seam in something or if you're doing dressmaking and you just want to hold things together, get your seam line in, it's a really, really great pin to use there. I know it's called quilting pins, but you can use them for absolutely anything. Really great deal there, and they're selling really well. Congratulations, really pleased you're all getting a great deal. Right, so now we have got a fabulous collection of bundles here. Unfortunately, we are at that point where there are so few of these left, there's not a huge amount left, and unfortunately we're not able to get these again. So this is the last chance saloon on most of these bundles, or all of these bundles, so we will then go through and we're going to start showing you each of these but just remember there's not a huge quantity of stock left how many 
There are only eight of these bundles remaining, so if you are interested in them, please don't let them hang around. If you've got them in your basket, make sure you do check out because we really don't want you to miss out. Um, and look at that. Look at that panel. Isn't that just so interesting? The detailing on it is so great. And the shading of the, it's almost like a watercolour on those birds. They're really great. And then that wonderful cage with the flowers in, because normally you've got a bird in a cage, but here we've got flowers. It's great. And then you've got the little bird free on the top of it. It's very whimsical, that. So not only are you getting this wonderful panel, you're also going to be getting a half metre of this coordinating fabric as well. And this is just a miniature version of that panel, the miniatures um, downscaled, that's the word I was looking for, downscaled version of that panel. Just look how interesting that is. And such a great deal. So half a metre of this coordinate and the panel, which is 43 centimetres wide, is 13.49 today. It's called the Wild Spirit Birdcage Fabric Bundle. You've got half a metre of the fabric and the 43 millimetre... So there we go, that is our, what did we call it now? I've forgotten the name, but Wild Spirit Bird. This fabulous panel and a half metre coordinate there for £13.49. Really great deal. And by the time I started doing that demo, we only had eight left, so don't hang around with those. Now I'm hearing, is it the hummingbird you said? So this is already sold out, ladies and gentlemen. So please, if you see something you like, that's gone. It's gone already. So now we're doing a Riley Blake combination, and this is one of my favourite fabrics that we've ever brought to Sewing Street. I absolutely love it. So this is the bundle that you're going to get. It's a six half metre bundle here, so three metres of fabric in total. £38.94 £38 is the price on uh, all of those six there. And let me show you what each one of these look like. This is literally my favourite fabric we've had on the show. I absolutely love this. And I'm fortunately unable to get this again. And how many did you say? There are only seven in stock. All of these will be sold by um, half metre bundles, so they're already pre-cut. If you did buy two of them, they would come to you as two separate sets of half metres. Um, we can't then get those two in metre pieces, unfortunately, because they're already cut. But look at that metallic. Isn't that just the most fabulous, fabulous metallic in there? Buying the bundle as we are today, you're going to be able to save £3 on that bundle as opposed to buying them individually. And it's £38.94 for all of those six today. That's our first fabric in that bundle. And Riley Blake's always got the most fabulous quality on it. And I just love the fact that this metallic follows through into this... Um, this fabric here. I don't know if anybody ever did message in what these French words mean. We did ask people to mes message in what the French was on all of these. I'm not even going to attempt to massacre the French language today. I did that the other day and it was dreadful, so I won't do that ever again. But look at that wonderful little kitty cat's face on there in the metallic. It's just so, so fun. That's our second fabric in our six fabric bundle here. And then, the, this is really cute, you've got little balls of yarn, which they look like polka dots from that distance, but look at them, they've got these wonderful little balls of yarn all the way along there, and you can just imagine a little kitty cat trying to play with all of those, or a little puppy. So this is our third fabric in the bundle, you're getting a half metre of this, along with a half metre of every other colour. Oh, I hear these are selling really well. We've only got four of these left. So if you are interested in it, don't forget, if you haven't checked out, unfortunately, 
this fabric bundle is not yours until you've paid for it. Somebody can come along and take it out of your basket if you haven't paid. So make sure if you do want it, you can check out. If you're hesitating checking out, don't worry, you're only paying the postage and packaging once throughout the day, whether that's whether you buy on the website or whether you buy on the website, then call the call center, then buy on the website again. It doesn't matter. You're only paying the one P and P, $3.95 all day. And that's whether you're buying a giant sewing machine or a rotating cutting mat or just a, the gorgeous pins that we've got on our early bird special. Whatever you're paying, buying, you're only paying the one postage and packaging. It doesn't matter how big or small it is, it's only the one. This is the fifth fabric in our Riley Blake bundle here. Half meter of flowers. It looks a bit like wallpaper, doesn't it? Those fabulous vintage wallpapers that you can find. So that's our fifth fabric in our bundle there. And then last but certainly not least, we have our polka dot with our fabulous metallic kitty cat in the middle. Riley Blake do these fabulous metallics. I'm really, really loving these fabrics. And there we go, those are the six fabrics that you're getting in this fabulous bundle. Riley Blake, three, uh, three meters of fabric, six half meters, and that's £38.95. And these are the six fabrics you're getting for those. Really great deal, and it's selling really, really well. If you are interested, please don't hang around. Make sure you check out in your basket there. We don't want you to be losing out on all this. Also, this is a new bundle. I've not seen this one before. This is a four half meter bundle by Riley Blake. Same fabrics as we had before, but only just four of them. So this is £25.96. You're saving £2 on this. And I'll show you these again. You've got this fabulous kitty cat again with that beautiful polka dot and that metallic kitty on there. And then we've got this lovely flower. And then the, my favorite one, which is this gorgeous herringbone chevron metallic. And you're gonna to have to excuse me for three seconds. I forgot to unplug the iron. <laughs> and I can smell it getting a bit warm under there. Forgive me for that. And then last but not least in our four bundle over here, we've got our lovely little balls of wool again. And that is our four fabric bundle there, half meter of each, and our two meter bundle there from Riley Blake. £25.96, if you buy the bundle today, you'll be saving two pounds as if you were buying it on its own. Really low foot quantity of these fabrics and unfortunately won't be able to get them in again. So if you are interested, don't hang around. It'll be gone and they're gone. And also we've got the fabulous Riley Blake, same collection in a totally different colorway. How many have we got? We've got three of these bundles left, so if you are interested in that, don't hang around with that. 
So there's only the few of these left in the, in the shop, so make sure you do check out if you are interested in them. You're getting four different fabrics there, half metre of each, and let me show you what each one looks like. And this one's also amazing. This might be my second favourite fabric we've brought here. Actually, I shouldn't really say that because the Allison glass is amazing as well, isn't it? Look at that. That gorgeous metallic. It's just, I love metallics in any form of fabrics. And it's just such a wonderful coordination of fabrics, these. Really, really great. Riley Blake's got the most fabulous taste in these things. This would be wonderful as a bias binding or a binding on a quilt. It would be fabulous. Or any sort of cushion project either as well. So you're getting a half metre of that in this bundle. That's the second half metre there. And then our third half metre. These are our wonderful kitty cats with a polka dot just in a different colourway of the grey there. Just love those little kitties. Just adds that little depth of difference in the fabric, which just makes it pop so beautifully. Again, as a binding, actually that could be quite interesting as well. I'm just thinking those half circles going through your quilt. So that's the third half meter in this bundle. And then we've got this wonderful pink um, balls of yarn. I was going to say knitting then. That was why I was thinking, nope, knitting's wrong. That's not the right word. But it is incredible how these fabrics change just by that tiny little um, colour difference with the backgrounds. So that is the last half metre you're getting in this bundle. £25.96 for the four half metres there. And unfortunately, all of these Riley Blakes, we're not going to be able to get them back in again. So it is the last time you'll be able to get it. And if, like me, you always regret the fabric you've left behind, make sure you do check out your baskets, because until you've paid for it and it's yours, unfortunately, it can be taken by other people if, you need it, if they need it. But there you go. You can see a fabulous combination of colours there. £25.96. Now we've got our Lewis and Irene, um, are these called Tulip Fields? I love this one because you've got the most gorgeous little collection of mice here as well. Four half metre bundles of these. And just look at the little baby mice sleeping in the flowers. And then you've got this little mouse over here. And I imagine they're having a little mouse wedding before they go and live in their little windmill house over here. It's a really fabulous colour combination there. Look at that. And just see they're having a little a little mouseketeer wedding and living in that little house afterwards. It's a really, really fabulous collection, this. So this is the Tulip Fields fabric, two metre bundle, half metre of each of these pieces for $26.99. Again, these ones are really low in stock at the moment. It's the Pepino fabric bundle, three and a half meters. So you've got seven different fabrics, all by the half meter. Um, and you're gonna get uh, three and a half meters there for 38 pounds 93. Very, very low in stock in this. And again, we can't get these in again. So if you do like these, we've had them on a few times before, make sure you check out as soon as you can, otherwise you'll lose out. And next we've got this one is the floral seed bun uh, packet bundle. And I do like this bundle. I've met, I used the crazy six ruler to make this. It was a fabulous color combination for these. How many? We only have two of these left. So if you do like these fabrics, we, as you can tell, we're very, very low in stock on all of these. Um, and once they're gone, they're gone. You can't get them back again. £24.96 for that four, uh, four half metre bundle, making up two metres. The Flora Seed Packet fabric bundle there. 
$24.96. And now we've got my favourite bit of every show. We've got our lovely books here. We've got three books here. Let me show you those. So we've got the Mug Rugs book. We've got the Quick and Easy Patchwork book. And we've got the Quilting on the Move book by Alistair MacDonald. Um, so these three books together are, you're getting three for two for this in the sale, um, and it's £15.98 for all three of these. Really, really great collection, that. So we'll start off with the Mug Rug book. So if many of you don't know what a mug rug is, it's basically a nice, easy way to start off doing quilted projects. And you can do anything on them. You do really interesting designs. Oh, look at that one. It's a Mondrian one. Oh, I'm going to look at that first. Number 18. Oh, before I go there, I'm rushing ahead as always. Lock your blade. Sorry, I get very annoyed when I see that. Um, you've got all the ways of using it, but when you use your rotary cutter, lock your blade. Got all your tools and how you do them. You've got all the techniques for a plique, machine plique and how you're doing those as well. And we've now got Bondweb in stock as well, if anybody's been waiting for Bondweb, it's here. You've also got the Lazy Day Stitching, Lazy Daisy Stitching here by hand, French Knot as well. And then it just goes into all these lovely patterns on how you do it. So what a mug rug is, is you've got this little fabric, um, it's a little rug and they're not very big. These ones are six and a quarter by eight and three quarters. Um, and you can then put your mug on it, or a little cake, or whatever you're having. So everything's always on one little mug. Rug. <clears throat> but it's a really nice way of being able to do little gifts. Um, and it's a nice way of practicing how to do quilting as well, doing it small. <clears throat> Look at the little kitty cat playing with the thread. Very, very clever. Oh, that's cute as well. Nice little cupcake. And you've got the little monkeys. Oh, that's really good, where you can have a little spoon if you're stirring your tea and coffee or anything from that. And you've got the little cover for that as well. Got the baker shop. That's very cute as well. But I always look in the background and look at that. That's really cool. Oh, that's stunning. Look at that. So anybody wanting to practice English paper piecing, this is a nice way of doing it. And it's a great little project to trial things, like cathedral windows terrify me. They absolutely terrify me. But this is a nice way of just doing two of them and seeing if they work. And then I'd hand over this to Sylvia because she can do the bias binding. I wouldn't even know where to start. Oh, that's cute as well. What a really, really cute little book that is. So that's our first book in our trio of book collection. Next, we've got the Quick and Easy Patchwork book here by Claudia Schmidt. And remember, at this price, for $15.98, you're getting all three of these books, not just the one of them. There are loads of different projects in here as well. Love this. So you've got all your different... Um, uh, details that you need for sewing basics, you've got your sewing techniques here, that shows you how to use, test if your quarter inch seam is right, if you've got one of those gauges, we had them on the other day, and it just gives you this really interesting way, oh look, nice little shopping bag, oh that's pretty, nice little patchwork, and again, if you've got, we've all got loads of fabric that we're all maybe a bit tired of doing quilts and things, this is a really nice way to do something totally different. And then we've got the rainbow quilt as well. So it reminds me of that Alison Glass one that we did earlier, but this one is cut differently to the way that we did it. Oh, and it's got these lovely little tassels on the edge on how to do it. Oh, and that's great. If you're going to want to keep all your cutlery in one place, that's a nice way of doing it as well. Oh, and you've got patchwork there, and you can also carry on with the patchwork, and they teach you how to do the bits and bobs to make sure your points work. And you've got matching pillows and heart pillows. Oh, I love that. Nice little boutique pillow cover there. All manageable size projects. You're able to do all of these very comfortably. And it's also, they look like quite quick projects as well. So you take your time on them and you just feel really great satisfaction in order to make sure you've achieved it and done it the way you want to. Oh, that's very pretty. Oh, I like that. Good little storage bundles, those. And it looks pretty. And I could put this so I don't lose all my stuff. 
quilt that on there or embroider that on there. Oh, and you've got the fabulous templates at the back as well for all the things you want to do. So that's the second book that you're getting. Now we have Alistair MacDonald, one of the most fantastic designers. He is so, so talented. I absolutely adore his products. Um, this is his book here. And again, you've got the introduction there of all the bits and bobs you'd need. Oh, doesn't he have a fancy signature? All the tools and things you'd need for this. Oh, that's great. So if you're wanting to cut out for English paper piecing, it shows you how to do that with Taylor's chalk. And this is a really nice small project, this one. I'm hoping that's in the book. Oh, it is. Look, here we go. Nice, easy project for you to be able to do as well. And it's nice that you can do something small like that and know that you're going to enjoy it. Oh, and he shows you the nicest way of being able to do a zip in order to make sure you're doing that. What a clever way of doing it. And again, you've got a nice little English paper piecing again here. This is brilliant. Oh, look at that with the, with the diamonds. They're really good. What I'm looking at this and thinking, oh, I'd really love to sort of organise those zigzags in a funny um, angle and have them all looking quite interesting with that. That's really good. Oh, wow, look at that scarf. Oh, that's very clever. So that looks like old suit fabrics there as your scarf. I like that. Oh, and a table runner. And also a set of ironing mitts, uh, oven mitts. What a clever book. Hot water bottle cover there, which I love. And finding I'm using hot water bottles because it's getting so cold at night at the moment. Oh, and look at that play mat. That's really interesting. A nice way to be able to use up all your scrap fabrics as well. Oh, very fancy evening purse for when we can all go out again. And a nice Christmas bauble as well. You're absolutely spoilt for choice on what to make out of this book first. It's gorgeous. Oh, a doorstop. Oh, look at those shapes. Half hexes there. Very, very clever. Well, Alice has knocked that out of the park as far as I'm concerned. You've got three fabulous books here. One by Christina Rolfe, Claudia Schmidt and Alistair MacDonald. You've got these three wonderful books there for $15.98. And enough small projects there to keep you going for many hours. It's really, really great. And now we've got these wonderful fat quarters that we've had on... Uh, I think a couple of days ago we launched that. I think it was two days ago on Wednesday. We launched this green one So these are four fat quarters for six pounds 99 was it? So you're getting just under a meter of fabric there for 699. Those are the four colorways in this bundle here Great for your projects in the book there. These are 45 centimeters by 55 And just look how fun these designs are Look at the detailing on that. Loving that. So that's our first green in this bundle. And we've called it the green floral four piece fat quarter bundle. That's the first one. This one really does uh, sort of looks a bit like Liberty, doesn't it? Look at that. That ni nice pop of colour in there just really brings the fabric to life, doesn't it? And then this is the third one. And they're great little blenders, these. They work so well together. Working out at £1.74 a fat quarter. And these fat quarters are 45 centimetres by 55. And this fabric, I have got something incredibly similar to this myself. Bought loads of this in different colourways. And you can see why. It's just really, really interesting fabric. And just that tiny hint of blue in there just makes the fabric flow so beautifully there. And that's our fourth fabric in our green floral four piece fat quarter bundle for $6.99. Four pieces, 45 centimeters by 55. 
Really great little colour combination there. Look at that, doesn't that work so beautifully together? So there we go, that's our four piece green floral bundle. Um, this one is our aqua, I think it was. Light blue. And again, all of these four bundles, uh, these fat quarter bundles are 6 dollars You're getting four pieces which are 45 centimeters by 55. And let's look at these more closely. This one's really sweet. And there we go, those are the four in the light blue colorway there, $6.99. Then the next colorway we've got is navy. So you're gonna get four colorways on this as well. Each one of them being 45 centimeters by 55. There we go. And you can see these colorways would go so well with those books that were on previously. Any of those projects would work very, very well in that. And then lastly, we've got our black collection, if I'm not mistaken. Got, got to have a good dot in there. And there we go. Those are the four colours in our black floral che and check four piece fat quarter pack. $6.99 for those, 45 centimetres by 55 each one of those. Really nice set of bundles there. So we are now going to redo our set for Block of the Week. These are the three different colourways we've got. So hang around for a few seconds and we will be back in a moment. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping.
Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved and it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hello, I'm John Cole Morgan and welcome back to Sewing Street. It's nine o'clock on a Friday, so it's block of the week time today. I am really excited about this block of the week and I'm so excited to see everybody's different pictures and progress on our Facebook fans page as well as on our Sewing Street page. Really great to hear from you. And I've had a couple of questions come in from people which I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to answer for you in this hour. Um, but let's show you where we are. We are going to be doing block six this week, which looks like this. So this block fits in over here. That's our block six that we're doing there. And because we're on block six, we're gonna show you quickly the blocks that we've done previously. This is block one. So block one that we did the first time, that slots in over here. And then we've also done block two, which pops in over here. And now if you're watching these blocks one and two and thinking, oh, I didn't know about it. What are you talking about? You're still able to join in. They're all available on the website. So you can go join at any point. All these fabrics are exclusive to Sewing Street. That's where our block three was slotted in. All the fabrics are exclusive to Sewing Street. So you'll never have to worry about not being able to take part. We'll always be able to have the fabric available for you. This was our block four. Just checking I got these in the right order. So block four fitted in there. And then you've got block five as well. And block five was that one there. So now you know exactly where we are because we're now halfway through this process. So we've got a 13 week program, 12 weeks to make the 12 blocks. So you've got three, six, nine. And let me pick this up and I'll show you the bottom bit. And you've got three blocks on the bottom as well. My arm's not quite long enough to show you those three there. But the great thing about these quilts is that they're completely non-directional, so you can have them however you like them. So next week when we get to number seven, which is the bottom half of the quilt, we might hang the quilt the other way around and you can see it's completely non-directional. So what are you gonna get when you order one of these block of the week weeks? First thing you're gonna get, first pick your color. 
we've got three colorways. This is our bright colorway here, which is really fun and vibrant and really, really exciting on that. We've got our wonderful blues collection over here, which I love. And then we've got our, this is the most popular, and you can see why. These gorgeous greens and greys and pinks really, really work very well. And I think I'm matching that today. So this is the most popular colorway we have, followed by this one and followed by this one. But there's not much difference between them all. It doesn't mean that that one's sold out and we've only sold two or three of these. There's not much difference between them. So it's all very, very popular colors. And when you order them, you're going to get a block with instructions. I'm not going to hold that around two blocks so you can see where they are. And also, you're going to get this fabulous panel of fabric. Now look at this. So let me get this the right way around. So this is how much fabric you're going to get for this week. Each week will change. So some weeks you'll have slightly more of one color, slightly less of a co another color. It just depends how much fabric you need for each one. So that's what's happening with this. Each week you're going to be left with fabric. There is just no question. There is so much fabric here. You're never going to use them all in being able to do it. Now when you get your fabric, you're going to see just over here, there's a little label and over there, and over there, and over there. You've got a tiny little bit of white fabric, a little white bo uh, block there, which tells you what they are. And I'll show you that in all three colorways, just in case you think it's only on the blue. It's not, it's on all four color, uh, all three colorways. So you can see there's fabric one, and this is the vintage colorway. That's the blue colorway, and that's fabric one. That's fabric two. That's fabric three. And then as we move along, you've got fabric four over here. Oh. So there's fabric four on the blue colorway. And then on the, new, uh, the vintage colorway, you've got fabric four here. So why is that important? I hear you asking through the screen going, what are you talking about? So when we were writing this pattern, it was very difficult to try and come up with a way of being able to show um, all the different colors that we've done. So what we did was we called, we did our colorway in pink, gray, black and white. So we called fabric one white and then we called fabric two pink and so on. So you'll be able to see, we always refer to fabric one, fabric two, fabric three, and fabric four. It's really important you know that because that's the bit you're cutting out. Um, so that is the blue colorway. You're gonna get your instructions and that wonderful big panel. So that's the blue. And I'm really, really proud of the fact that this has been such a well-received project. And we've even had people asking if we can carry on doing blocks of the week after lockdown's lifted. Because what our plan with this was is because we've got lockdown and everybody is staying at home, we wanted there to be a project for everybody to be able to enjoy and to be able to take part in and to do together as a project on social media to take part that way. But also it gives us something to look forward to. So you know every Friday I'm going to be showing you how to do the next week's block. Then you can then take part in that and then that block will arrive the following week. It's just such a great project and everybody's really, really responded well to it. It's great. So that's our vintage colorway. So you'll get vintage colors there as well as the wonderful pattern. And then last but not least, you're also going to, we've also got our brights colorway. Got the wonderful brights colorway there as well. And then you've got the, not only have you got this wonderful panel, and there's a lot of fabric here. And you get my name on it. And then you also get the wonderful instructions as well with that bundle. So this block is going to look like that in the blue. This is what the finished product will look like. And it will look like this in the, in the vintage. And then lastly, you're going to get this in the brights. 
And I promise you, after doing this block this week, you are going to know your half square triangles better than you ever have before, and you're going to love it, because I told you you will. <laughs> So let me sh start by doing what I like to be able to do is each week to be able to show you exactly how to make the whole block. Some weeks I'm not going to have enough time because the block takes a little bit more than 40 minutes to make in some weeks. This week may very well be one of those weeks. But the first thing you're going to do, you can do this by using scissors or you can do it by using rotary cutter. For time I'm going to do the rotary cutter method today. And what you're going to do is you're going to line your ruler. This is a really great ruler to use, the 24 and a half by 6 and a half inch ruler. You're going to line this up with the edge of your colorway and the white. And you're going to cut that off. Oh, I've just gone off my mat there. Just that little bit too far. So all I'm doing is I'm separating my four colours from one another. And again, you can do this with a pair of scissors, you can do this with a rotary cutter, however works best for you. But I do ask you, please, if you are using a rotary cutter, make sure you cut away from you. And the one thing that would be really handy to have to use is a rotating cutting mat. and you're clearing off the white from the front there. Now, when you cut this, I've been very good and I've managed to cut all the white off. But over here, let's look at this example over here. You'll be able to see that when I've cut this, I've, I've got a little bit of green left on my white fabric. But when you're cutting this, you may end up with a little bit of white left on your fabric. So you can do one of two things. You can either cut that fabric off, the white off, or if it's less than a quarter of an inch, it's going to be hidden in your seam allowance. So it doesn't really matter that it's on there. You must just do what's comfortable for you. So over here you can see I've got a tiny little hair of pink just on the edge there. You can see it's a tiny, tiny smidgen of pink over there, and it is tiny, you can barely see it. I am not bothered about that at all. I'm leaving that be, and that is going to stay there and then be part of my seam allowance. Ooh. And again, I'm hearing vintage is in the lead already. It's been selling really well already this week, which is great. Now, the first thing I do as well, you'll notice that I've just cut off what I'm calling fabric three. That's important. Put it to one side. Don't put it too far away from you. Reason being, as you get through this process and you do it a number of times, you're going to forget which your fabric one, two and three is. Especially when there's a little break between it, you will forget. Nothing wrong with that. And the great thing is, is you can now put, oh, I didn't cut the beginning bit there. So I've got my fabric one, my fabric two, and I just cut these off because it just makes my life that little bit easier. When I am doing the pattern, I can then put one, two, three, and four on the pattern, and I know exactly where I am. I do find it's a lot easier um, cutting these off now and separating them out at the very beginning. If you found a better way of doing it, you must do what's comfortable for you. This is just what works best for me and how I recommend it. It doesn't mean you have to do it that way. And this takes a little bit of time, but I wanted to make sure that I did it for you, that you can then just feel confident that you've seen how I'm doing it. Because sometimes getting a giant panel in the post, you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do with that? So at least I'm here showing you exactly how to do it. 
And I was really pleased. We had a com uh, one of the comments come through that one of the ladies said, oh, I don't know how to cut this out. Please show me. So I was really pleased she did that because it's actually one of those logical things because I've cut out loads of different things before, but that doesn't mean you have. So it's nice to be able to show you exactly what you're doing each week from beginning to end. Right, so that's my fabric number one. So I'm going to put that over my sewing machine. And now I'm coming up to, now I'm just going to trim these off. And I'm standing behind my rotary cutter to make sure it's safe. Getting that off there, so that's now cut off, that's cut off. And then I'm trimming these down as well. That's our second colorway. So I'll put that over there. Uh, we've already got our third colorway, which I'd lost for two seconds then. There's our third colorway. And then this is our fourth colorway. Now on here, you will see what I meant about cutting and leaving a little bit of the pink on. I didn't intend to do this, it just happened. And just like I'm sure many of us will do, this is how it goes. You can see just over here, I've left a little bit of the pink on. So you've got one or two options. I know that'll be hidden in my seam allowance, but if you want to, you just neaten it up. It's entirely up to you how you do it. And it didn't cut, so it's going to be part of my seam allowance now. And there we go, we've got number four. This is now our fabric marking number four here. And that's our fabric four. So we've now cut these all out, there we go. Now I'm hearing we've had a message in from Sandra. Thank you for messaging in, Sandra. Oh, she's saying, John, you're my most favorite presenter. You're very sweet. The check's in the post, sweetheart. Loving block of the week. And she's saying, it's great to learn the different ways of patchworking if you're new to sewing. Oh, I'm lovely. I'm so pleased you're enjoying it. Thank you so much, Sandra. That's very, very kind of you. I love getting all your messages in. Thank you. Keep them coming in. And have a great day. Right, so the first thing we're going to do here in the pattern you're going to see that I have done two sets of cutting instructions. This is for people who are complete beginners versus people who are a little bit more advanced. You're going to be able to cut your squares two different ways. If you're very advanced and you're completely comfortable with this, great. You cut it to the size per the picture. And it's in the instructions. I'm sorry, is there a rattle on this? Um, the, you'll be able to see the instruction size that you're cutting if you're feeling very advanced. Otherwise, you're going to cut them a little bit bigger and we're going to trim them down. I've been sewing for quite a while, so I feel more comfortable cutting them a bit bigger and trimming down because you get a much more concise block and a much nicer size to be able to make sure that it all finishes. So one of the questions, now while I'm going to be cutting these out to the size that I know they've got to be, um, I'm going to ask a, answer a couple of questions that I've had asked um, during the week. Now, I feel very confident cutting multiple layers on different ways. You do this how you prefer. If you want to take your cutter and cut your squares like that one at a time, that's what you do. I have done this many, many times, so I feel confident cutting so many layers. Please do not do it if you don't feel confident doing it this way. It's just what I feel is better for me. And I'm on live telly, I'm trying to get the block finished. So bear with me and just do what works best for you. So one of the questions I have seen asked is, oh my goodness, my block doesn't measure the right size. It's slightly wrong. What do I do? Do I unpick it? My answer to you is very simply, no. Don't unpick it. If you want to unpick it, go ahead, but you don't need to. In week 13, I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks of how to hide if your block is slightly bigger and how to make things at that little bit, every single block, every seam allowance, everything that you do, every way you cut things, things will be slightly different. If I make this block today and I make it another day, it'll come in at a different size. That's just life, we do things differently. We are sometimes inconsistent with things. So please don't worry if you're slightly out on your block. Obviously if your block comes in at 18 inches, you've done something wrong. And by that I mean if you're doing, if you've got less than a quarter of an inch, um, if you've got more than, so let's say less than half an inch as your difference, I wouldn't do anything. 
Um, if you're a little bit more than half an inch to an inch, I would say then we'll just drop me a message and we'll have a chat about it. But having a smaller size block, you will absolutely be absolutely fine. In week 13, I will show you exactly how we're going to bring that all down to make life that little bit easier for you and get your block to match up perfectly. So please don't worry if your block's not exactly 15 and a half inches. We will get it there. So, I'm then cutting these into triangles. Oh, I didn't cut those through nicely at the beginning. Just want to double check how many I'm doing of fabric four. Right, I've got to do one more of them. No, I don't. Well, I've had a message in from Jan Hill. Hello, darling, how are you? She's saying, good morning, John. Loving the shirts. That is very kind. Thank you, darling. Hope you're having a great day. Right, so I need to cut. I'm done with that one. Right. Now again, I am cutting loads of different squares here. You do what's comfortable for you. You don't have to cut like this. You do what's comfortable for you. And don't forget, if you haven't joined in with us before, all the weeks, all six blocks are all available on the website. You can buy all the different ones that you've missed out on, and all the YouTube videos are available on the Sewing Street channel, so you will easily be able to catch up with everything that you've missed. You don't have to worry, you're not going to be able to be left out, you're not going to be left behind. You'll easily be able to catch up on that. Um, one, two, three, four. Right, so this is all the fabric you're going to have left over, loads of it, so you can save that for another day. And as I've said before, I am very confident with what I'm doing with this. Please don't cut too much if you're not comfortable. Actually, I think I'm going to split that because that looks quite big. And the great thing with the instructions is I am a very visual person, so I like my pictures. I need to know what it's going to be looking like at the end. So you'll find loads of pictures in the, in the instructions as well. So you'll be able to do that. And I've loved the fact that we've had people who've never quilted before and thought, actually, this looks quite fun. We're going to give this a go. And it's been really nice to be able to see your messages. And a lot of you have messaged me personally as well, which I've loved. Thank you for that. And I love seeing all your different blocks and how you've made out with them. I think it's great. Oh, we've had another message in from Maureen. Morning, Maureen. She's saying, hello, John and everybody else at Sewing Street. Morning. Thank you for keeping us company. Oh, she's going to make her block of the month when she's finished her design roll race. Oh, how wonderful. Which will be her first ever quilt. Oh, I'm so pleased to hear that. She's got a question. Should I use a different needle than a universal needle to do quilting? So, yes, you definitely do. The reason is you need to have a slightly thicker needle for quilting because obviously you're going through so many more layers. So what you need to do there, it's called a quilting needle. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head if they are 90 by 14 or 100 by 16. I always get my needles the other way around. But I think it's a 90 or 100 needle you need. But it's called a quilting needle and you can get them at any um, haberdashery. You'll easily be able to find those as well. 
uh, but that we are actually looking at getting a whole load of needles in so bear with us we'll get into that very very soon um right so i'm looking at one two two of those and two of those right so then you just refer to the pattern and what you're going to do is you're going to sew up various blocks so these are my fabrics three and fabric four i'm also going to sew fabric one now just remember you get these the right way round don't do what i did the other day and sew these backwards uh, you're going to do number one you're going to split those because you're doing half with fabric number one and fabric number two over here and then you're doing half with fabric number four and fabric number one just double checking how many i'm making of these so that's six of these two of those and eight of those if i'm not mistaken yes right so six and then you're just quite simply going to take these now you can chain piece these um, i do suggest you use what i've called a donkey all that is is when you're starting to do your stitching on these you will find when you put your triangles together so you've got these two triangles you're going to fold them onto each other these tiny little bits here sometimes get sucked into your sewing machine and go and they just get very annoying so what i do is i put this little piece of fabric here and i start stitching on the piece of fabric and as I get close to the needle there, you can see I'm just putting that point on the, um, on the donkey so that the fabric edge is not actually raw. It's actually being protected by that donkey. Now, a couple of weeks ago, it was two weeks ago, I did that lesson on scant quarter inches. Now, if you're an experienced sewer, and you haven't done your quilt uh, blocks here a little bit bigger, you will then be able to carry on doing your scant quarter inch without any problem. On this one, the scant quarter inch isn't that important because we're going to trim these down at the end of the hour, at the end of the process, you can be able to trim these down to a certain size. So you don't really need to worry about your scant quarter inch, which is another reason I've given you that advantage of making your blocks just that little bit bigger when you cut them that you don't need to if you're feeling a little bit nervous about doing the scant quarter inch or you're not quite sure how to do it this is a lot more forgiving this method in being able to just ignore that completely and just sew as you normally would So I'm going to chain piece all of these in the hope that I've got enough time to finish the block for you. I'm not sure I will, but I'll show you. You'll do exactly the same thing for each one of these half square triangles once it's done. Um, So we've done half the block now we've sewn together. And now we're going to carry on doing our number one and twos. And we're going to make eight of these. So if anybody who hasn't done chain piecing before, all that means is you're just feeding the fabrics in one after the other and just sewing them all, all together in one go. Over here as well, you've got the bias um, going through the foot of the needle, uh, th through the foot of the sewing machine at the moment. You can tell I'm not guiding it, I'm not pressing it, I'm not doing anything, I'm just letting the machine do its work um, and just letting it all go through nice and comfortably. And again, if your seam is slightly out, don't worry, because we've got that advantage of being able to trim these down afterwards.
And we're about to do our last one. Hopefully it's our last one. Yes, I think it is. And there we go. Got our thread cutter there, just cuts that nicely. And then all you're going to do is, you've got all of these together in a nice little bunting-esque little row. You're just now going to separate these all along. I've got this fabulous um, threader, thread cutter on the edge of the sewing machine here. So I find that's the easiest way of doing them. And you've got your little donkey at the end there if you need to do that for the next session. So now we've got all of those there. The next step is to make sure that we now press these. Now normally, as you know, I love pressing everything open. Today, because of time, I'm going to now press to the dark side. I'm going to make sure that I set my seams like I do always. Well, 99% of the time. And then I'm just rolling that back to the dark side. So you can see that you're fabric here, the dark side of your fabric, everything is going towards the darker side. The reason you do that is if you've got a, if you press to the light side and your seam shows, you'll be able to then potentially see a bit of the darker fabric through the light fabric. And we're just trying to avoid that. So when you've done these, I'm going to separate these into three separate piles. So that was my, that is my 6.3 that I've got over there. This is my 6.2. Oh, I'm hearing good news that people have not done this before are checking out on block one. Really great to hear. Thank you so much for taking part. And you've got it in different colorways as well. So if you've really enjoyed this process, you can get them in different colorways. And I do actually know somebody who's got this in three different colorways. They are just so addictive and the fabrics are so, so vibrant. And they're totally different looks as well. So you can see why people may buy one or two more in different colorways, because they're a great project. And you get to take part and be involved in that whole social media aspect of things, which is great. So that's our 6.2. Now we're going to do our 6.1. So I'm making sure I've got my pink on the top. Now, obviously, in this colorway, 6. Uh, this is now my 6.1 block. Um, obviously, in this one, my fabric 2 is pink. Uh, depending which colorway you're doing, it may not be pink, just make sure you refer. So these two are fabrics one and two. If you do have an unruly triangle that will not um, press to the dark side, all you're going to do there is you just rotate it around. So you press that like that. And if it isn't working very well, you just go back and rotate it there. The important thing is to make sure that the seam that you're sewn isn't going to be distorted. So it all keep that nice and straight. That's the aim of the game here is to keep that nice and straight. There was a bit of schmutz there. Sorry about that. And this pressing mat is fabulous because you can put it on top of your work, take it away and then put it straight back on top of your work and carry on pressing when you need to like I'm about to. And you do need to press at each stage. It just makes your life that little bit easier. And please, for your partners at home, if like me, you don't iron, just remind your partner you're pressing, you're not ironing. Nice try, Andrew, nice try. So there we go. We've now got 6.1, 6.2 and 6.3. Keep those here, so I'm going to line those up again. So my next step is I'm going to take two 6.1s and I'm going to sew those together. But before I do that, I'm now going to square this uh, half square triangle up. So on this fabulous six inch ruler that we've got here, you've got this 45 degree line here. That is the line that you're going to match up with that seam. Really important that you do that because if you do that and you square the block up, it's not going to be straight. You're not going to end up with a good point. So you keep that lined up 
as straight along that line as you can. And because we're going to trim all four sides, not just two sides, you can see the size that you're going to go to is in the pattern. You're then going to rotate this. So you've got a bit of space on this side and a bit of space on that side. Hold that down nice and firm. And you go like that. Now, you'll see when I do this on this mat, you can see it's a pain. You've got to pick the fabric up each time. It's annoying. Um, you've got to reposition your ruler. It takes a little bit longer. So it's fine. You can do it on this mat. The mat is absolutely fine. However, I cannot tell you how much this is going to change your life on it. If nothing else, when you're bored, you get to do that. And when you're bored still, you do that. When people are chatting to you on the phone, you can't be bothered, you just do that and you get distracted by it. It's a nice little technique to be able to do. Um, but what you're doing with this is you keep your ruler doing exactly the same as I've just done. Line that up like that. Trim off these two sides. Leave your ruler in place. Rotate round and move it down. And I'll show you another trick as well, because these creative grid rulers are very clever. I'll show you another trick I learned when I did this. Because the thing is, you do have to square up 16 of these triangles. So that's 64 cuts that you've got to make. Every single thing that I can do to save myself time on it, I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my ruler so that over here you can see you've got the one and the one. You've got the one and the one. So what I'm doing here is I'm lining this up over there. My central line is exactly the same. And I'm just going to take a little bit of fabric off the edge there. Not a lot, just a small little bit. In fact, I'm going to take even less than that. Okay. Do that. Take, get rid of those. Rotate your ruler around. And now I don't even have to pick my ruler up. I just slide it down to the size I need it to be. Make sure that that's on my central line. And I trim. So I haven't even had to pick up my ruler. All I've done is I've just used both sides of my ruler to get that to the size that I need it to be. Isn't that a simple method that you hadn't even thought of to do? I think that's a nice simple way of being able to utilize your tools to the best of their abilities. And now I've just done it completely the other way, just because I forgot. We'll all do the same thing. So you can see I'm not squaring all of these off, because only because I'm a little bit worried I might not have enough time to do the full block. Oh, come on. I had a message in from? Yasmin. Hello, Yasmin. Just wants to say a big thank you to everyone at Sewing Streets oh, for keeping the programs going throughout the whole of lockdown. It's so appreciated. Oh, Yasmin, that's really lovely to hear. Thank you. It's not been easy and we've been doing everything we can and we're just so grateful to all of you who keep watching and keep supporting us. It's, a, it's really, really a great testament to this community that we live in that everybody has been so kind and supportive. And when things have taken a little bit longer to get to you or the calls have taken a little longer because we're making sure everybody's safe, we really are very grateful for all of your patience and understanding. We're all doing our very best and we're so grateful for your support. Thank you. So now again, I'm just going to trim up three or four of the, each of these just to make sure I'm hoping I've got enough then to do the whole lot. And there we go. What's my time like? Oh, OK. Should be able to do the whole lot. We'll see how we go. Right. So you can see this does get a little bit laborious. I put a little um, bouncy music track on in the background, get a little bit of um, a little bit of a bounce going. But then when you get a bit of a bounce going, you sometimes cut your blocks wrong. So just take your time, do it safely. And I'll cut a few more of these. But I told you at the end of this block, you're going to know how to do your half square triangles better than you ever did before. 
But it's great because once you've learned this on this project, you'll be able to then look at tri um, half square triangles in a different way going forward. And you'll see that when you sew these together, you'll be able to get a totally different feel on doing a larger triangle and trimming it down. Yes, it's that little bit extra work where you've got to cut all four sides each time, but it does give you such a more crisp finish and it does make the block work so, so well. Oops. And remember, all six of the bundles in all three colorways are all available to you on the web. So if you want to join in today and you haven't, you can buy all six of them in one go. And remember, you're only paying the one day PNP. So if you've already bought something in the last two hours, uh, you don't have to pay the postage and packaging again. You've already paid it. So I'm working on the vintage colorway, which has been very, very popular. Closely followed by the blue, and then very close behind that is the brights. And now you can see in every project you look at or have already looked at, you'll see half square triangles are really very, very popular in every project that comes up. Uh, well, most projects that come up. So this is just a nice way of being able to learn how to do your half square triangles, how to square them all up, make sure they're all central, make sure they're all cut to the same size. It just makes your life that little bit easier. And I'm determined I'm going to finish this block. If it, Hopefully we'll have enough time and you'll see now I'm cutting all of all 16 of these blocks now, getting them all to the right size, making sure that this quarter inch, uh, sorry, the um, 45 degree line in the middle lines up to your seam line, getting that all nice and accurate. Only three more to go. I know it's not the most exciting thing to watch. But if you're a beginner, you're able to see exactly how to make each and every single bit along the way. But it's people as well who've made these quilts together, or who've made these quilts before, or feel that they're a little bit more confident with sewing. You may pick up a different trick, like that ruler trick there that I showed you with this fabulous quarter inch, uh, the fabulous creative grids ruler, which I've completely forgotten and stopped doing, only because I'm a bit worried if I do something wrong on national telly, I'm going to get it, I'll never live it down. So I want to make sure that I get this right. But there's so many different things that a sew is. It doesn't matter how long you've been sewing for, you're always going to learn new things. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Everything is always new and you can learn. But also starting it from the beginning to the end makes life a little bit exciting. And you're doing it with us as well. Just do, go at the speed you want. If you're watching us back on YouTube, you can pause me at any time and I'll go <clears throat> and then you carry on when you're ready. And there we go, we've cut them all out. Don't look under my board. Right, so now I'm going to lay these out in the order of the block. Um, the finished block is what it's gonna look like. And this is the bit where it does look complex, but I promise you, just take your time. No one's rushing you. Oh, wrong one. And there we go. That is what we're going to be making. So it is now really, really simple. I'm going to sew these ones together, all four of these together first. That's going to be my first task. Now, when I'm sewing these together, when you fold them on top of each other, you're going to be able to see here, you've got loads of different layers on this section. So what I would suggest is not hold those nice and tight, get everything lined out, but start sewing from this side rather than this side, because your machine's going to struggle to go over those initial layers, first of all. So I'm going to line this up, 
on that edge, and I'm going to make sure I keep my quarter inch. Now, this is where a scant quarter inch is really, really important. And because I've got the fabulous 560, I'm going to sew off that little block. I'm going to press my thread cutter, and then I'm going to pick up the next one that I'm doing. And the reason I've done that is then I don't have to unpick the threads as I go along. It's a really fabulous feature on this 560. And there we go, and I'm going to do the next one. Oh, I'm hearing hundreds of these block sixes have gone already. That's brilliant news. I'm not surprised because everybody's really enjoyed taking part. And if people haven't taken part yet, it's a lovely way to be involved in the community and sewing. And it's really great. And thank you all so much for your support. And you can see I forgot halfway through to do that. So now I'm doing that now. And now I'm going to bring back my lovely June Taylor pressing block. Grab all four of these. And this is where I'm going to press my seams open, only because when I match these seams up on the line above, I think it's a little bit easier doing it with open seams. But again, you must do what works best for you. Press that down, and then when you get to the other side, press that again. So that's my first one. And now when I'm pressing my seams open, all I'm doing is with my fingers, I'm just gently guiding the fabric open. I'm not in any way pressing. And then I'm using the nose of my iron to open the fabric. I'm not pressing down yet. And once I know everything's open, then I let it down. Nice and simple. Press that back like that, and you're done. And you're gonna do that for all four of these. And that makes 6.4 in your design, in your pattern. And here we go. Again, I'm just gently holding the iron above that press line. Do that, and there we go. And there we go. So I've got four of those, and I put them back in the block as to where they go. I do think it's quite important that when you're building this block, you do try and put everything back as you sew it. So the next section I'm doing is, just want to double check, I'm doing these two together and these two together. So I'm going to put those together there. I put those together there and I know I'm sewing on those sides. Now on this one, unfortunately, you do have a double um, layer at the bottom. So you just very slowly start off. Don't go very fast. There we go. So just until you start it. And there we go. And now I've thread cut that because the 560 has got that fabulous option on that. And again, using my thread cutter there. And I've got my bits ready to do there. Again, I'm just holding that fabric open, putting the nose of my iron on there pushing down, making sure I'm pressing it neatly, folding it back and doing that. Doing the same on this one. And there we go. So now we have put those together and we know that my fabric three is green, if I'm not mistaken. 
and that's going into the middle there. And then the only two bits left to sew are these two. So I'm going to just do these while I'm doing, while I'm at the machine. This is going slightly out of order for the pattern. And I've just got to pay careful attention to my top thread because my bobbin is full, but my top thread's very low. So I might need to just change my top thread in one more seam. Because I always find the bobbins are the things that run out, but we always forget to look at the top of the machine. We've all done it. And there we go. And there we go. You are now going to put that, wait, let me just check. Yes, yeah, so you've got the, the fabric one going in the middle there. So now we've got four different compartments. You're gonna sew those two together and you're gonna sew those two together. Now, when you're sewing these two together, our fabulous early bird is, was, isn't. Uh, where are my pens? There we go. So what you're going to do here is you want to make sure on here you can see where the white, where my white fabric and grey fabric are. You can see it's created that little triangle point there. That's roughly where you're wanting your needle to go through. So I'm putting the pin through there and you can see that that's just gone perfectly into that section there. Then over here, now my point on this triangle is not spot on. Don't worry if yours isn't either. You just do the best that you can. And you won't be doing it on live telly in a time crunch. So you go there and you're just joining. You can see there my pin has gone just where that point is. And when you're at that point, you make sure then you line up both of these sides here. Got those lined up. This is where you need to grow an extra two or three fingers. You can see as I move my fabric, you can see there my pin isn't straight, but now my pin is completely straight. I make sure that I hold the fabric on one side completely straight. And then as I'm squeezing, 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 I'm rotating this pin. But if you're not squeezing hard enough, you'll, fit, you'll see that your fabric will actually move. So make sure you hold that really nice and tight and then rotate your pin and you can see I'm finagling the fabric underneath and you're pinning that through all the way through. That wasn't the most graceful way of doing it but it's a nice way of being able to show and then when you're sewing you're aiming to go that side, this side of the grey in order to make sure that you hit that point. If you can hit that point exactly You've won, that's, you've won the award for best point in your quilt. If you don't, please don't worry. That is how you do do it. If you are gonna unpick it, don't unpick the whole block. You unpick about an inch that side and an inch that side of the point that you've missed and just rearrange your fabric accordingly because you do not need to undo the whole seam. So here, you can see I'm approaching. Now, my pin is now underneath my foot. Now I take my pin out. I leave the fabric there all lined up. Cross your fingers, click your heels, and hopefully I've nailed it. And if you haven't, there's nothing wrong with that. But I have. So there we go, that's what you're looking for. You're just looking for that little flying geese just to kiss that fabric there. Just looking for that tiny little kiss there. So that's a perfect point there. Watch the rest of them be completely wrong. Oh, there are the pins. Sorry, I keep moving things around my set. One of the ladies posted on uh, the fans page today that she'd lost something in her sewing room and her little daughter turned around and said, oh, mommy, you're like John off Sewing Street. He's always losing things on the TV. Which I thought was very cute and very true. There we go. And then I'm just lining this up again. 
So it's exactly the same for these other two blocks. You're doing literally exactly the same thing, lining this up at the beginning and the end to get as close. A, oh, oh, did I run out? I have, I ran out halfway through. So, at least I knew it was happening and I didn't sew all of them together. Oh, go on. There we go. It's always when you're when people are watching you that you can't get the thing to thread. So that, oh, that's a tiny little bit on the end there. I hear we've had a message in from Sandra. Morning, Sandra. Oh, this is the lady who messaged in earlier to say she was I was her favourite presenter. Thank you, darling. Saying, as a beginner, this is brilliant. She's learning loads. She's saying, I will, all in capital letters. She will, and oh, she's buying and starting block of the week. Oh, she loves it. Oh, Sandra, that's so kind of you. Thank you. She's got an idea. She thinks it might be ambitious, but she's going to make block of the week matching curtains. What a great idea. That is brilliant. I like that. Got to think big. Oh, I think that's a great idea. I have asked, I have actually been asked if we're going to be doing curtain coordinates with it. Not sure we can. But doing this as a quilt for a curtain, that'd be lovely. And if you're doing it in front of a door that's normally got a draft or something through it, you'll be able to then protect yourselves against drafts as well. Nice insulation there for your home. Right, so now you've sewn your four pieces together. Um, and I know we're running a little bit over 10 o'clock, so thank you for bearing with me. But now you get the whole block together. And you can see when I run out of time, I press to the dark side. There we go. And then this one, I'm going to press. And the great thing, what I like to do is, as a semi-beginner, having only started six years ago almost, um, I like the fact that this is actually, because I think everybody gets overwhelmed with quilts and things, but if you actually just break it down into a really bite-sized, manageable pieces, you know, if I tell you to do the whole block, you're going to go, nope. But if I tell you to then go and do um, a half square triangle, you're thinking, oh, I can do that. Oh, a half square triangle's not so bad. I can do that. And then if I say to you to do another half square triangle, then you're thinking, oh, that's not too bad. But then, and then before you know it, I've got you doing 16 half square triangles and you've made a block. So now you've got a four patch. You can see these four patches go together. So exactly like we did in the middle, trying to make our tri uh, triangles kiss, you've got two little gaps there. You're gonna do exactly the same, trying to make those two kiss. And you're gonna make those two kiss there. So let's start with those. Now again, if you want to pin this, please do be as com do whatever you like. Um, because we haven't got very much time, I'm going to just power through, and I know your points will be better than mine will be. I love the fact I'm hearing we've got a lot of people checking out on block one still. I love that because it's nice to know people are getting involved and liking the idea. I think it's great. And the good thing is, is all the YouTube pages and on all um, our social media pages as well, you'll be able to then go and find block one as a separated hour and you'll be able to then start from the very beginning with us. Oh, that's not bad. Not perfect, but not bad. And there we go. So I'm pressing that to the dark side because we're running out of time. Pressing to the dark side. And what's so handy when you press to the dark side like this, you're actually then got an ability to nest your seams. 
And if you don't know what nesting your seams means, I'll show you now. So we've now got two pieces that we're going to sew together. Now on this side, you'll see our seam is going that way. And on this side, our seam's going that way. So when I put these on top of each other, you'll be able to then get the seams going in opposite directions. And you can then just butt those fabric bits together and have them going in opposite directions. So again, you've got those little triangular bits to meet in the middle. So the first bit is fine, the beginning bit is fine. Then on this bit here, we've got our triangles to meet. So line the, I'm lining those up just by sight. You'd be using a pin to make sure that's nice and accurate. And then these two nest together perfectly there. And then this one as well, we're trying to meet those two little points up there. Brilliant. I think I missed that point, so I hope you're going to forgive me for that. And there we go. That is your block finished. Now, before I open it up and reveal, I'm going to press my set my seams and I'm going to look at it first and reveal. Oh, I did miss that seam, but the rest is not bad. So there we go. That's your block. And now I'm just going to double check that that's the correct size. 15 and a half by 15 and a half. Woohoo! Now, again, if this comes out at 15 and a quarter, don't worry. If it comes out at 15 and three quarters, don't worry. If this comes out as 18 inches, you've done something wrong. So that's when you worry. Then I would unpick and recut, and then what it is is that you've not trimmed your triangles down. So there we go. That is our block number six. So on our block number six here, this is the vintage colorway. This is where it's going to pop into our quilt today. Try and do that and show you where we are there. So that's where that's going to flop in today. We've got three colorways that you can choose from. That's our blue colorway behind us. This is our vintage. It is definitely the most popular that we've got on the show. Um, and you're going to get the instructions and your fabric panel. So obviously I've just cut the vintage instructions up. So we are going to be, if you're going to be getting the brights, this is the colorway that you're going to get as the bundle and you're going to get the instructions. Yep, holding that the right way around. And if you're going to do the blue colorway, you're going to get the same instructions and you're going to get your fabric panel as well. The vintage one, you've just seen me cut up so you know exactly what you're going to get there. So that is number six. That is what we're doing for number six there. So I'm going to just quickly recap all the blocks that we've done. Let me just get rid of these fabulous rulers and our lovely rotating cutting mat. I do think that you've seen how much I use that rotating cutting mat. It is a really good investment if you're going to be doing these projects. Um, so we've just shown you the brights and the blues on number six. So let's start back at the very, very beginning as to what we were doing. This is going to be the set of instructions you're going to get for block number one. And we're going to start off with blue. So you can see that's our blue block that you're going to end up with. And you'll end up with loads of fabric left over as well. So that's our blue colorway. Then we're going to do our brights colorway. There's our brights colorway. And again, you're going to get, the, this will be your finished block. You'll get loads of fabric left over. You're getting the instructions with them as well. And then we've got the vintage colorway as well. Again, you're going to get these with the instructions. This will be the finished block in the vintage. And that's block number one. And then block number two looks very different. There's block number two and we've got our blue again. And we've got our brights. Got our brights colorway there with the instructions as well. And obviously the panel that you get, you're going to have loads of fabric left over. And then we've got our vintage colorway as well on this. This is block two.
And don't forget, all of these videos are all on YouTube. You'll easily be able to catch up with all of those. And I'm on social media as often as I can be, so you'll be able to then ask any questions that you need to of me online as well. So you're going to get the instructions. If you're going to do block three, there are the instructions and the finished block in our blue. And we've got our Brights colorway as well. And we've got our Vintage colorway as well. Vintage is proving to be the most popular, followed closely by our blue colorway. But you can see why it's such a beautiful colorway, that one. So that's number three, which means if you get to that point, you're a quarter of the way through. Then we've got block number four. So again, you're going to get the set of instructions. And you'll be able to make block number four, which looks like that, in the blue colourway. And then you've got our Brights colourway as well. Sorry. Got our Brights colourway there as well. And finally, we've got our Vintage colourway here as well, in our block four. Again, each time you order the panel, you've got loads of fabric left over. Um, perhaps not quite enough to make two blocks out of each one, but over the, over the periods of time, you've got more than enough fabric to play around with and then have a go on other blocks and other colorways. For block five in our blue colorway, it's going to look like this. I think I'm holding the block upside down, but you'll forgive me for that. But the great thing about this block is completely non-directional. You can do it how you like. We've got our Brights colorway. I think I've also got this the wrong way around, but there we go. And then we've got our vintage colorway here. And that's block five. And I've just finished block six. So if you have got things in your basket, please make sure you check out on all of them. Don't want you to be losing out on anything. And if you've got any questions, please do contact us on social media. We'll easily be able to ask, answer all of those. And what a great show. I'm very excited. If you haven't seen the full quilt out, let me show you the full quilt. This is in our vintage colorway. So this is what the quilt's going to look like. I think I've got a little bit of a crease in the bottom there with a border. So you can see that the 12 blocks on there are all so different. But I wanted to be able to push your, your talents and techniques and your learning curves to be able to get to a different place and be able to make different things with it. So that is the block that you're going to get. But what's so lovely is you've seen it in that direction. But equally, if you hold it like this, you can see it's a totally different quilt being on its side. But again, completely non-directional. And even if you wanted to put it this way. And lastly, you can see any way you put it, it's going to work really, really well. A vintage colorway is the most popular at the moment. Come on, don't fall down. We're doing so well. Ugh. So thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back in a few minutes once we've reset the set. See you in a minute. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping.
Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring your question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon.
Hello, welcome back to Sewing Street. I'm John Cole Morgan and we've got a fabulous hour ahead of you for today. We've got all of our Creator Grid rulers and you know how much I love all of these. Really excited to show you all of those. So first of all, I'm going to see, you would have seen me in my last hour for the block of the week using this fabulous rotary cutting mat and the rotary cutter. Uh, the rotary, rotary cutting mat, we call it a self-healing mat. Um, this one is 34 inches by 22 is the cutting size on the imperial side of things. Um, and then obviously on the other side as well, we've got the metric side. Don't want to be leaving our dressmakers out of things like this. So we've got our fabulous dressmaking side on here with metric. Most quiltings are in imperial in inches, so the other side there. You've got your angles there of the 30, 45 and 60 degree, 30, 45 and 60 for left and right handed people there. So you're easily able to use for both of that. Um, and on here, exactly the same, you've got the lovely ruler, um, the angles in the middle there as well, 45 degree, 30 degree and 60 degree. If I got my 30 and 60 the wrong way around, forgive me on that but you can easily see that they can be worked on both the right and the left hand side. Um, and the numbers, you'll see that each number over here, you've got a number in a circle and just above it, you've got a number outside a circle. So whether you're using the ruler from the left to the right or the right to the left, you've still got the numbers available to you in order to be able to read your dimensions on here very, very comfortably. This is a fantastic mat. And what's so great about it as well, if you're cutting fabric that's width of fabric, most width of fabric is around about 22, 22 and a half inches long. This is a mat that is 22 inches, 22 and a half inches very comfortably. So you can fold your fabric in half and easily cut across it without any problem at all. If you buy a smaller mat, um, you then do have that problem where you've got to either rotate your fabric or you've got to rotate the mat, be able to get cut to a point and then move everything down and cut further on. It's just so much easier being able to have a much bigger mat to be able to do all of that with. The next thing, this is my favourite rotary cutter. It is the Millwood rotary cutter. The thing I like most about it is that you don't have to press a button as you're opening and closing it. It's a really simple, easy to... Um, rotary cutter to use. When you're opening it and closing it, you've always got that nice little click. So you can see I've got it open now, and then I've got that nice little click that I know that it's closed. Um, it's for left and right handed, so you would just rotate that around. Um, sorry, that's not, I didn't mean that, that was completely wrong. With the left and right handed, you can easily use it like that, and then go this way and use it the other way as well, very comfortably. You've just got the guard on the other side there. Really great little rotary cutter, and I've used mine for thousands and thousands of hours. Really great. With the rotary cutter, you obviously do need a self-healing -he rotary cutter mat. This is a fantastic one to use. I've got many of these in my studio, so and I've been using them for years, and they last for a very, very long time. Only thing I would say to you is if you are using a rotary cutter, the only time your blade is open is when it is on the mat. When you come off the mat, lock it. That's it, you've got to be very cautious of it. So don't do that, keep it open, wave your arm around, fold fabric because you may hurt yourself. And we do not want people doing that. Make sure that you've only got this open when your rotary cutter is on the mat. Safety first. These uses any 45 degree, 45 millimeter rotary cutting blades. You can use any blades in this one as well. Very easy to change too. So the next thing you'll need in any form of quilting, you've got a six and a half by 24 and a half inch cre um, creative grid ruler. Um, I've shown this a few times that you'll see that on there, I've got no slippy grippy bits, but on this bit there, you can see as I catch the lights, I've got slippy grippy bits over here. I think they're called non-slip grip dots. That's what it is. I keep getting that the wrong way. So you can see on this side where there are no dots, if I put that onto the, the mat, your ruler moves a lot more. But if you then turn this round where you can see you've got those dots, you can go there and it's a lot less movable because every single Creative Grids um, ruler that I'm going to show you today have got these non-slip grip dots on it. So you'll easily be able to have that technology in all of the rulers, all of the cutters, uh, all of the uh, ruler trimmers on all of them have got this, te this technology so that the ruler doesn't move anywhere near as much as it does with a slippery surface. This one is six and a half inches wide, going down to a quarter of an inch on each denomination. <clears throat> the reason you'd be wanting that is most... Um, Certainly quilting cutting, quilting cutting, you're going to be cutting in quarter of inches, half inches usually. Certainly in the patterns I did earlier on in the block of the week, 
we were cutting their quarter inches as well. So this type of ruler would be really, really good for that to be able to help you being able to do that. The other good thing is, as you can tell, as I put my hand under here, you've got a 45 degree line in the corner there. So if you wanted to do your squaring up and you just wanted to buy one ruler, you've easily got your half square triangles there that you can line up and square your block that way. Then you rotate your ruler around this way and you've got your quarter, your 45 degree line to line up again and clear that side. So you've got all the measurements that you need there. There's two loads of 45 degree lines, one there under this hand, one there. And then on this side, you've got another 45 degree line and you've got your 60 degree line there. And if I'm not mistaken, the 60 degree line, if you turn the ruler around, you're quite right. You've got the 30 degree line there as well. So you've got all the measurements that you need for angles in being able to do it, as well as having this nice little um, hole. If you want to hang the ruler up anywhere, you've got this little hole that you can hang them all up on the wall. Lovely, lovely ruler. And it's definitely a must for any quilter, any size quilting room that you've got. That's what you're going to need. If you wanted to get something slightly smaller, we've got the six and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler as well. Exactly the same measurements across, exactly the same details. Still got the 45 degree line there and the 45 degree line there. You've got your 30 degree line and 60 degree line there. Another 45 degree line there. Exactly the same technology with the um, non-slip grip dots over there. You can see it's not moving at all. Whereas something that's a little bit, that doesn't have the dots, you can see there doesn't have the dots on this side. If I push it, it does move a lot more. If I rotate it round, it's got the dots. You can see it's a lot more difficult to move the ruler around. Hmm? And it won't be damaging your fabric in, in any way either. It's great to be able to have those dots and it won't cause any problems. Because sometimes if you use the ruler um, gripping spray, you do end up with a tiny little bit of tackiness left on your fabric. This is built into the technology of the ruler, so you will never have to worry about that. It will never damage your fabric at all. So this one's just slightly smaller. It's 12 and a half by 6 and a half. 17 for that ruler there. Really great addition to anyone. What am I doing next? So this has been one of the most popular rulers that we've had in. This is our hexagonal trim tool. And I'm going to start off by showing you a mock layout of the different blocks that I've made. So you can see you've got loads of different options. Um, I tried to stick to one colorway, but then I got a bit bored with the black and the gray and I thought, oh, I'm going to pop some orange in there as well. But what I love is I'm going to just lay these out however I want to. And I've done, these are four inch hexagons in the middle. So I've just lain those out here. And the great thing with this ruler is it's quite a complex block, but it is so achievable by being able to just use the ruler nice and slowly. And you can just see, so you've got various different ways. If you want to have, you can see here, you can have that, but then you can just put a plain one in the middle. But here you can create a secondary pattern by having all of these meeting in the middle. So you've got one in the middle, which is completely, you can have a completely plain one in the middle, or you can then just create another one of those and put that in the middle. And if you wanted to, you can just make these all the same color to be able to do it as a different effect. It's entirely up to you and how you want to do it. It's a great way of doing it, but not only has the ruler given us that, but you've also got the ability to create these setting um, half hexes over here. You can do that on both sides. And if I slide these down, so you can pop that in the corner there, but also the ruler shows you how to create these setting triangles that will go there to be able to create a nice straight edge on the edge of your quilts to put borders on. So you can create all of these different tools, all of these different borders along the way, and you can make this as big or as small as you like. You can do it in any way, and it's just such a really, really easy ruler to use. And it does create such incredibly effective blocks. So I'll show you now how you're going to do this. So the great thing with any form of Creative Grids ruler, not only are you getting this fabulous ruler or trim tool, whichever one you're getting, on each of these, you're going to get a set of instructions. So this is our hexagon trim tool, and this is our hexagon trim tool instruction booklet. But 
You've got the QR code over here and you've got your QR code on the actual ruler because all of us do put these in very safe places and can't find them. If you scan the QR code, it'll show you exactly what it is that you can do with the ruler by giving you a demonstration of the, the different ruler. Um, if you go and look on, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> If you go and look on the instructions, it'll show you exactly how to use this trim tool from start to end. So you can see you'll be starting over there by cutting that very first hexagon out over there. You'll see you've got the hexagon cut out there. That hexagon on this piece here is that gray hexagon in the middle. So that's how you're doing it as a two inch hexagon. But if you don't want to do a two inch hexagon and you want a four inch hexagon, the orange hexagon there is your four inch hexagon and how you do it. So it shows you how to cut all of that out. And then on the inside, it gives you all the details of what size you need to cut your strips for each one, what width, what length, and you get it down. And it builds up the block each round as you go around. So this one, I am. So the great thing with this is that sometimes you do get rulers that are, you buy the ruler and then you're thinking, and now what, what do I do now? The great thing with this is you've got the instructions in the paper version, but equally you've got that scan code. If you've lost the instructions, you can just zap your ruler with a QR reader and you'll be able to easily see what it is that you're doing. And then if you get to the point where you want to then do the next round of these, um, these should be the right size because they've been left in a bag for a little while. I'm just going to press these nice and quietly. And again, this June Taylor pressing board is an absolute must with things like that. So now all you're going to do is the next session on this uh, round is you're going to take your greys and you're going to line that up. And what you're lining up is you're taking that grey underneath it and lining your fabric up against there. And then, so you've got one of two ways of doing this. You can either take your ruler, line it up. Sorry, I'm starting midway. You can line that up. So in the middle of the ruler here, you can see I'm on round three. And, you, and that's one, two, three. So I'm doing round three. So I'm round, putting my, there it is there. It says they're round three. I'm lining that up in the round three section. So that is the end of my line there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim that off so that I know that's the width that I have to be for round three. Then I'm going to rotate this round. There we go. And I'm going to trim that down as well. And it just makes things so much easier. And also now, if you're going to use your rotating cutting mat, which you'll see now is going to make this tool a lot more easy to use. I'm going to put that in the middle there. I'm going to round, put up, and it's actually round two that I'm doing now, not round three. Sorry, I misspoke earlier. What you're doing is you can see my dotted line there lines up with the hexagon that I've got in the very middle. And then I'm holding this down and I'm trimming that side. And I'm trimming that side. And then I rotate it around. I've done that side. I just need to check I've done that side. <clears throat> I haven't done that side. And it's great because you just put that dotted line for round two in the way, uh, in this over the gray, and you just trim it down as you go along, just making sure that you know exactly where everything is and you're able to square everything up. And the great thing is you've got other dotted lines all the way around. So not only are you lining that central block up, you're also checking that over here, that seam line's the same, over there that seam line's the same, and then you're squaring it up and you've got your perfect hexagon for round two. And then you're gonna start onto round three. So I know that that piece of gray is going on that end there. So I'm gonna sew that bit of gray on there. Again, I'm keeping my quarter inch here. And I know that that's going on there, and then I know that my gray is going on that side as well. <clears throat> I 
definitely have got a frog in my throat today. Sorry about that. And lastly, you can do that. Now, I know that that's too big, so I'm just going to take this and trim this down just to make my life that little bit easier. There we go. Lining that up. Alrighty. And you can see how this rotating cutting mat makes your life a lot easier in this process. And now I'm going to do my pressing. And then I roll these back. And there we go. So now I've got these little bits that are hanging off the edge. All I do now is I put that back on my rotating cutting mat. I line my round two up there. So I know my round two works there. And I can go and trim the gray off. Or I can use my 12 and a half by six and a half inch ruler. I can put my line, you can see I've got my line here lined up and I've got my line there lined up. And I just trim off the excess. And I rotate there. And I trim off the excess. Now this is not essential. You'll see on the video, they don't trim those bits off. They leave those bits of fabric behind. That's absolutely fine. That's enti it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. I find it easier when I'm sewing my next line on that I've got a flat edge to be sewing on to. That just is a personal preference. And then I know that when I put my orange on here, I've got a nice flat edge to lay them onto there. And there you go. So that is how you're going to use your hexagonal trim tool. If you haven't understood what I've said, they have got those fabulous videos on the um, QR code. So make sure you do check those out. And they've got some fabulous techniques as well that perhaps I haven't mentioned in this tutorial. Um, I have demoed this a few times. So if you go back and check on the YouTube channel, you'll be able to see that I did this in a much more in-depth video. I uh, can't remember what date that was, but just have a check on there. You'll be able to see Creative Grid's um, hexagonal trim tool. And again, don't lose your instructions. We had a fabulous tip from somebody. What they do is they actually go and they laminate these and they've got a book where they put all the laminations in and it's a really nice tip to be able to do that. So you're going to get your hexagon trim tool, the set of instructions, the QR code guiding you to how to use the ruler and all of that's available for $24.99. And don't forget you've got your hexagonal um, trim tool with your Creative Grid non-slip non -slip grips on it. Those aren't dots. You can see that those, um, um, I don't know what we'd call them. They're a bit like, I don't know, dull sandpaper. There's a dot over there. You can see there's a dot there. And if you feel along there in the hexagons, everywhere in there that they can do as a slippy, a non-slip uh, grip dot, they have created it. So you've got that gri non-slip grip technology on that as well. Next, we're going to do the eight inch log cabin trim tool. This is also a really great little ruler. Got your trim tool here. And again, you've got this wonderful set of instructions that come with it. And it literally shows you exactly how to do it. it tells you how wide to cut your blocks, uh, your, your strips. It tells you exactly what length to cut them to if you need to. You've got three different blocks that you can make out of it. You've got, still got that QR code. Um, and that is present on the instructions here. So make sure you hang on to the instructions. These makes, this makes three different blocks on here. Um, this is the first block and the second. Uh, that's the same block there. I just tried to create a bit of difference with the fabric um, choices on how you do it. It's nice because you get to have a bit of a play with it and you'll be able to see different aspects of the block working differently. And again, adding that little pop of colour just changes the whole quilt and the whole dynamic of doing things. And then you get to play with it. So if you wanted to create something like that, it just adds that different dimension to the blocks on how you do them. So that's what I did with the solids, the three different blocks there in the solids. 
Um, and equally then we use this fabulous Liberty, or is this Moda? I think this is Moda. Got our Moda fabrics here. So you can then create, I think I did four of these to be able to show you. There we go. So you can see you've got that wonderful technique there, but if you wanted to rotate one block and another, it creates a different feel as well. And if you wanted to do them all in the middle as well, that creates a totally different feel too. So it's a really nice block to be able to learn. It's a great size as well, eight inches these. Um, I think they're working really, really well with that. And again, it doesn't matter what color you choose with it. If you keep one side light and the other side dark, and then um, normally, traditionally, log cabin blocks have got a red, orange, or pink block in the middle, because that's meant to rec signify that the home fires will always be burning, you'll always be able to come home. But if you keep one side light and one side dark, it does actually then create sort of a yin and yang effect um, to be able to create balance on it. And then lastly, the last block you can make out of it is the courthouse steps on that. So you can see I've made that out of the Liberty as well as the solids. Both work really, really well and very effectively as well. And um, most traditional courthouses, you know, have got the steps going up to it and then it's got that roof going up as well and columns on the side. So that's what it uh, signifies there for the courthouse steps. That's all makeable through this fabulous um, eight inch log cabin trim tool. You've got this fabulous set of instructions on how to do it. Literally every single round you go through, this is the size of the block that you'll cut there for the centering block for the half log cabin. Um, and then the courthouse and uh, log cabin block there, that's the size of your square coming in there. But again, all those are in the instructions. And as you use the ruler, so if you're making a courthouse steps, for example, that's your round one. And then you'll trim everything up according to round one. You'll rotate that round to be able to trim the sides as well. Again, a rotating cutting mat comes in very, very handy in one of these. Over here, you match your block round two on the second round that you're doing. You trim everything off there, rotate your block around, rotate, put it, put it back to round two, and then you trim everything off there. And then lastly, your round three, you do exactly the same thing and then just square all the way around the block. Um, and if you're doing the half log cabin, which is this block here. Sorry, that one is for the, the method I've just shown you is for the log cabin or for the court steps. So they work both exactly the same. If you're doing the half log cabin, you can see you've got your centering block there and then you rotate this down as you go. You can see that you've got these inter, inter, intersecting sections there. So that would be for round two, that would be for round three, four, five, six, and then finally number seven. And that's how you would trim that up for the half log cabin section on there. So then we've got the curvy log cabin next. Make sure you keep your instructions with your rulers. We've got little bags with all of these together. Next one we've got is our curvy log cabin. So this makes a totally different log cabin block entirely. Um, this is the ruler you're going to get. Um, and you get this fabulous set of instructions with it as well. Um, these instructions will be able to show you literally every single step along the way, it tells you how wide to cut your strips and what you're doing. Uh, it shows you exactly what position to put everything as you move along through the ruler. Um, and then it just shows you the different ways of being able to do, like you could do a skinny court steps, um, and you've got the rounds, whether you're doing dark and light, dark and light. Um, and then it gives you different ideas of how to do the blocks together as well. So it's a really lovely ruler to use as well. Um, I've made a few here. Um, I haven't finished this one, but I can show you this in the black and gray colorway that we did. So you can see that then creates, you can see it's got a little bit of a circle going to it creating the curves. And then if I rotate these in, I think it's a little bit more visible doing it this way, because you can see you've got that curve going in versus the curve that we had with the log cabin, where it was completely square. Whereas this one, you've got that lovely curve in the middle of that as well. And it works very, very well with um, pattern fabrics as well. We're just gonna imagine that that doesn't need pressing. There we go, and I haven't made the third block, so this is just in a slightly different colorway. 
So you can see then it just works really well in a patterned fabric as well. And then the other one I tried was to do this in the inverse, making sure that the light was on the bulge out and then the dark was on the in. So you can see that's worked very, very well as well. And it's a really, really easy ruler to use. Let me show you how you're doing that as you go along. First of all, you're going to cut your centre square out, which will be in mind again, the pink one. Traditionally, the centre square is always pink. Um, because you want the home fires to always be burning, apparently. So what you've got is you've got two rounds. So with the previous log cabin one, you had one square that you moved all the way along. This is your narrow one for round one. So you centralise your, your central block there, and you can see that round one would end there, and then you would then rotate your block. And now we're doing the wide round one. So you can then see that you would trim your block there for the wide round one. And then you rotate your block again. And if you're going to be doing the narrow round two, which is that one there, you put your square in the middle of that. Then you trim your, your square down from there in the narrow one. Then you rotate the block and the ruler. And you've got the wide round two. So you then square that off for the round wide round two. And then finally, you've got round three, which in theory should be exactly the same for both positions. So, and it is, because you can see there's round three, you would trim over there, but equally the round three, you've then got the wide round there, which you would trim. But all of that is made so much easier with this rotating cutting mat, because you saw I was having to pick everything up all the way along. So if I've got that positioned at the narrow round two, I can then cut that. But then if I need to get to the other side, I just move that round, and then I've got my narrow round, I'm just moving my ruler, so I'm just rotating this as I go. And as I get to the point where I'm finished the block, I put the central square there, I would then cut there, cut there, or cut this way, cut that way, cut that way, and cut that way. It just makes your life a lot easier, this rotating cutting mat. This is the Log Cabin Curvy Trim Tool. Um, you're going to get the wonderful ruler with a QR code on it as well. So if you do mislay your instructions, that lovely QR code will get the details for you. Um, and then the set of instructions come with it as well. So you'll easily be able to get various different ideas for projects that you've got. They've got loads listed in here already. And it's a great way to just kind of push yourself and try something different. So next we've got some fabrics for you. We've got the Lewis and Irene Britannia. So we're going to start with the clock faces on blue. So if you've got the ruler, you'll probably need a bit of fabric to play with as well. Lewis and Irene Britannia clock face on blue fabric, half a metre, is $5.99. And then we've got the clock faces on grey. Five ninety nine again for the half metre there. And if the blue and the grey don't grab you, we've got the clock faces on light on gold. These could be quite good for a plique, perhaps. We're just experimenting with your rulers. You might like to try that. Five ninety nine for a half meter. Really great price point on that. So those are the three there. But in the same range of fabrics we've got, we've also got gold crowns on cream. Which are these? Getting that nice little bit of metallic on there. Five ninety nine for a half meter on that one. Sorry. Nope. Um, and then we have Union Jack Hearts. So you can see if you were looking to do a log cabin and getting some fabric to play with to do that, the great combination here, $5.99 for a half meter, what you might want to consider doing is you can see together 
Those three work really well together as a dark colour combination. That works really well as a nice colour combination then for your dark colourway. And then equally, if you're looking to do a light on the other side, you can see that that does actually work really, really well. If you wanted to choose just one of these or two of these, you could do a, you can get your light and dark colourway, just as an example, using it with the rotator, the curvy log cabin. You can see the light to the dark. These would work very, very well being able to do that, and such a great price point to have a bit of a play with with that. Next, we've got the Dresden Plate Ruler. Um, so we have got several different things that you can do with a uh, Dresden plate ruler. So there is a circle with this. We have a circle in a very safe space. I don't know where we've put it. It was in my bag. It's not in my bag. So there is a circle that goes with this as well, which is key, and it does come with the kit. We just don't have it on the screen at the moment. This is going to be the lovely Dresden pla uh, blade tool, and you've got the set of instructions that goes with it. Again, you've got this wonderful set of instructions and the QR code that goes with it. Oh, here we go, thank you. As if by magic one has appeared. So the circle that you'll be getting is that circle there. Thank you very much for that. You've got the little circle there. It's just my own fault for putting it in a safe place. So you can see you get that nice little circle which goes with it, the lovely little ruler and the set of instructions that goes with it. But what's so great about this ruler is um, you will be able to play in so many different ways. So let's start with the very first one you'll do. I've used some Liberty fabric we used to have. And what we've got is I, all I've done with this one is I've taken my ruler, I've put that on, I've cut them at five inches, um, and I then created my blades and I cut them all out. I did nothing with them other than sew them in a complete straight line. That was it. That was me done. That was the first way of doing it. So that's the first way you can do it. The second way you can do it is creating these lovely points and these are called fans. And what you do with that is you take your blade, you cut your blade out, you then put these right sides together, press that there, nice and firm. Do a quarter inch seam down the side. All you're going to do is just do a tiny little seam along there. Because the 560 has got a thread cutter, love that aspect of it. Um, and then I have a pair of scissors hiding over here. And all you're going to do is you're going to trim off the nose of this here. So you're just trimming off that tiny little bit there. And then you're going to reach for this fabulous stiletto, which I know is here because it's always here. There it is. Um, and what you're going to do there is you're going to take that and turn it inside out. And see there, so I'm taking that and turning that inside out. And then I take my stiletto and I gently nudge up this little point to make that as clean and sharp a little point as I can possibly do. And voila, there's your fan. That fits in exactly like that. So you'll put two of those together and you'll sew them into twos. And then twos become fours, fours become eights, eights become sixteen. And you just keep going until you have created a full Dresden. But that's, the, that's exactly how you do that. And I would just press that down nice and sharply. Um, you also are able to do these to tiny little ones. So you can see I had a bit of fabric left over. So these are... Three inches? Yeah, three inches long. You can see that's how big they are there. And all I've done is exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter what size it is. Right sides together. Press them along. Trim that down there. Use your little stiletto to get that point out. If you don't have a stiletto, a chopstick works quite well. Um, it doesn't give you as sharp a point as the stiletto does, but it gives you a good point. So there we go, we press that nice and firm. And then again, you're putting these right sides together. And all you're doing is you're then putting this through your sewing machine as well. You do give this a bit of a press before you do it. And there we go. And you'll just create a whole series of these going all the way along. So I'm going to use my 
roly, what do we call this press and roll? Roll press tool. And there we go. So that's how you do it there. And then finally, with the little circle that I've mislaid in mine, you'll see you've got that circle in here. You then put that the little circle here. You'll be able to put that down and then be able to cut these into curves as well. So those are the three main Dresdens you can make with it. But you don't have to make full Dresdens. You can do quarter Dresdens. You can do half Dresdens. So these are quite good when you're doing corners, that you can put these in corners. Or if you wanted to make a fruit basket or one of those baskets that they have, you can easily put that as your basket, put a nice little bit of fabric in there which has got fruit on it, and then just applique a little handle at the top. So a really great ruler to play with and learn and do different aspects with. And that's our Dresden Plate uh, 18 degree non-slip ruler. Next one we've got is our double kaleidoscope strip. So this ruler creates, this is the ruler here, and again, you get this wonderful set of instructions that go with it. The instructions are key because it's really, really, really multifunctional ruler here and how you can do different things. You've got a line here that says three and a quarter. So if you line your fabric up with this line, sorry, you line your fabric up to this three and a quarter line here and cut it down here, you are able to create your setting triangles here for the corners of your blocks once you've made them. So they've really thought of absolutely everything in this ruler. And what you're doing is you can create all these different types of blocks using different pieces of fabric, different types of fabric, doing totally different things. And it's so, so easy and simple to use. You're going to create, sew your fabrics together like this. You then <clears throat> line that up here. Now it is quite important that this measures four and a half inches exactly. As you can see on my mat, it does almost measure four and a, quarter, four and a half. Um, the reason that's so important is if it doesn't measure four and a half, you do need to maneuver your ruler down. Now, as you can see on mine, if you don't get it to four and a half, it just means that you won't, you'll do, need to do a bit more work on it afterwards. So you'll cut that along here, and then you're gonna cut along here. So you can tell that my rulers don't measure, my pieces don't measure four and a half, but when I put these two together, you'll see one is slightly narrower than the other. So you're gonna to need to do a little bit of remedial work, and it's not by much, you can see there. So if your rulers don't, if it doesn't measure exactly the right width, this is the way you'd fix it. You would then line that up and then trim all of your pieces to be the same size. And the reason that's important is if you haven't trimmed them all to the right side, like I did here, you're not gonna end up with a perfect point in the middle. So it's just about making sure that all of these pieces are exactly the same size, exactly the same height, and the same width. Then your piece will meet perfectly in the middle. So that's my only top tip with this ruler, a really, really great way of doing it. Again, I did a really detailed demo on that. Um, check the website for what date that was, uh, the YouTube page for what date that was, and I'll be able to show you exactly how I did that and how I fixed all the other bits and bobs with it. What date was that? Friday the 8th of May, we think it was. So this is the 45 degree double strip kaleidoscope ruler, $24.99 for that. It was designed by Rachel Cross. Again, you've got the lovely QR code on there on the ruler and on the instructions for any other demonstrations that I may have missed out on with that. Do the eight inch. Now we're going to do this fabulous scrap crazy eight um, ruler. So you're gonna get three different rulers with this one. I'm gonna try and hold these all together whilst fitting in camera. Oh, nope, that didn't work. And it doesn't have it the right way around. So you've got your instructions, you've got your two rulers there, you've got your third ruler there, almost got them all in shot. So that's what you're gonna get. And on each one of these rulers, you'll see that there's a cutting plan and a placement plan for how you lay these all out. You're gonna cut two of number C, cut one of number A and one of number B. I know that makes no sense to you right now. This one I did, I can't remember what date this was on, 
Um, but this again is on the YouTube channel, which you'll be able to follow as well. But the blocks that you make with it look like this. So you can see these come out and we've done this as a, a fabric bundle that we had that week and you can see it just works so effectively doing all of this. And the great thing about this rule is that as you make it, no seams to line up, nothing to do. You just literally cut and sew and cut and sew. And it was a very, very therapeutic um, block to use and make. Um, and even there where I'm using the two of the same colors next to each other, that works very, very well. And joining them up, so it's literally the most fun ruler we've had with regards to the scrap crazies. Um, and then when you want to lay these out, let me show you here, you've got your A block at the top. Um, and then you've got your C block there. And then you've got another C block there. And you've got your B block there. And you've got your D block there. That's how you're going to be laying them all out. So you would sew those two together first creating that will be your first bit of sewing it together. Then you put an A block on the top. So that's what you would create as your first one. And then your second one would be the C block and the B block, sewing those two together. And once you've sewn those, it's really simple to do going forward now because you've cut off the edges there. That lines up perfectly on that side, lines up perfectly on that side. And all you would simply do then is make sure you put this through the sewing machine. Your quarter inch is only important here that you're consistent. And that is how simple it is to join the two together. And that's yet another one of the blocks. And it's just such a fun way of doing it. And you'll see here, I've done these blocks the wrong way round, having cut the fabric the wrong way. So the blocks would come out ever so slightly differently, inverse, but they still work really beautifully with this quilt. So it's very, very easy to do. So even if you have made a bit of an error like I did, it doesn't really matter because it'll all go together at the end of the day. So there we go, that is our Scrap Crazy 8 block. You've got these three different rulers with it, the D and the C and the A and the B, and the instructions, oh, if I get it the right way around, the instructions there. Those are the three rulers you get and the instructions, $22.99. Well, we've had a fantastic hour there with our Creative Grids. Thank you so much for staying with me during that time. My favorite thing of the week to do is our Make of the Week. Make of the Week is basically where everybody posts a picture on social media, on our fans page. And between Vicky, myself and Debbie, we go and we pick our favorites. And our winners this week are Darlene Nutbeam, Nutbeam forgive me if I said that incorrectly, Sharon Park Bradley, and Annabelle Holford. These were the makes that they made. We'll start with Darlene. Isn't that the most adorable unicorn dress that? Really sweet. Then the next one was by Sharon Hark Park Bradley. Look at those gorgeous quilt, um, uh, cushions. Really, really cute. And I'm thinking that looks a bit like our dressed, our um, kaleidoscope ruler. And lastly, we've got Annabelle Holford, who's gone mad with our uh, Dresden ruler, which I love. So, so stunning. Love that. Well done, Annabelle. All of you have won free postage and packaging on, our ne on your next order with Sewing Street. So do drop us a line on our Facebook page, Sewing Street TV. Drop us a message and we'll be able to give you the code for your free postage and packaging. Congratulations. If you want to take part in our Make of the Week, just keep posting on our social media platforms, uh, being Sewing Street TV as well as the fans page. And once every week, um, Debbie, myself and Vix pick out the winners and the three of you will be able to get free postage and packaging on your next order. So tomorrow, what have we got? We've got Miss, out, uh, miss It, Miss Out Fabrics. Uh, this is with me in the morning. We've got Creative Grids, Non-Slip Lazy Angle Ruler. And again, at 10 a.m., we've got Quilting Tools. So stay tuned for us for that for tomorrow. Looking forward to hosting you for that. And that's been a really great show. Have you got anything left? So we're gonna recap our early bird. Um, we've got these fabulous Taylor Savile uh, quilting pins. 
Um, these are $7.99 today as a special price. These are heat resistant pins that you can use with the iron. Uh, one and three quarter inch pins by 0.6 millimeters. So if you haven't been able to get one of these yet, don't hang around because once they're gone, they're gone. And they're only around for 24 hours today as well. So our, uh, all of our early birds end after 24 hours or while stocks last. So don't miss out on that, it's such a great deal. One day PNP as well, so if you haven't bought anything yet and you do, only paying one day postage and packaging, $3.95. Thank you so much for your time today. It was lovely to be with you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.